is a tough business oh, to run it, for oh, president. Oh, I know. You're a tough guy, Jeb. I and, it's, and we need to have a leader that is pr Real principled. Tough. I will take it to Hillary Clinton, and I will whoop her. You're never going to be president of the United States tough, by Jeff, insulting yeah. your way to well, the let's presidency. Let's see, I'm at 42 and you're at 3, so Doesn't so matter. far I'm doing better. Doesn't matter. Dr. Carson. Thank you, Wolf. Please join me for a moment of silence and remembrance of Jeb Bush's campaign. <laughs> I love my dad. I'd kill for him. I'd go to prison for him because I love him so much. I'll give him a warm kiss. Uh... How do you do, fellow kids? What? I was in Washington, Iowa, about three months ago, talking about how bad Washington, D.C. is. It was to get the kind of the... Anyway, for goodness sake. <laughs> a cup server. This is a tough business oh, to run for oh, president. I know okay. Well, without uh, delay, we'll um, start this up pretty quickly. I'm starting a few minutes early. Sorry about yesterday. Imitation crab is, uh, I don't know what it's imitating, other than fucking death itself, because I was, uh, I was worshipping the porcelain goddess for about, uh, oh shit, a, a good five or six hours. Um, horrible stuff. Fucking wretched food. I haven't been that sick in a, in a while. It was not, uh, not pleasant. So I had to delay the stream a little, uh, push it off until today. I set up the um, information on Twitter and other various places if you want to come on. It's got the information you need to contact the Skype account and then I'll pull people on as we kind of go along here. So hopefully things should work out. I'm just going to work my way through the list. I'll give you 10 to 15 minutes. We'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. If your subject is shit and if it's not entertaining, um, I'm going to flush it. I mean, it, it will be cut short. If it's really good or really entertaining or interesting, we'll, we'll keep it going maybe past the 15-minute the thing. But I, I want to try to get on as many people as I can and give everybody a chance to, uh, to talk about whatever it is they want to talk about. Just remember, when I, when I dial you up on Skype, you're instantly going to be live. So just, uh, just keep that in mind. <laughs> All right. I see the chat is uh, ready for this. Rip Jim's asshole. Well, we'll we will see, chat. We will see. Maybe I'll have somebody come on, and they will they will just school my ass on some subject I am just completely unaware of. Who who knows what they're going to talk about? Uh, let me just check audio levels here, and then we're going to jump right into it. Okay, I think uh, I think we're good. Uh, also, remember too, if you're watching this. There is a delay of about a minute, maybe two minutes. So if you send your contact info and uh, you're lined up and you're ready to come in and get a call, don't listen to the stream for it because you're going to be a minute or two behind. So just keep your Skype, I guess, open and just be ready, ready for it. Uh, well, I've got a Russian gentleman. I'll bring him on first. Hopefully he speaks English. Otherwise, it's going to be a really awkward, very short conversation. Oh, hey there. Yeah. All right. Uh, you're live on the stream, man. Okay. I see. There is a delay. Uh, yeah. There's a bit of a delay, but uh, we sh we should be good now. What uh, what do you want me to call you? What's your name? Uh, uh Vladislav. <laughs> I'm sorry. What is your name? Vladislav. Would you? Uh, go you go ahead. Vlad. Vlad, call me Vlad. Vlad, okay, Vlad. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to the stream. You can call me Jim. So, uh, what okay. would you what would you like to talk about? Civilizational shift. Sorry, my accent. Uh, that's fine. A civilizational shift. Uh, okay, what kind yes. of sh what kind of shift are we talking about? Um, uh, the kind that happens 
uh, very often if you take into account Greece and Rome uh, and Europe in general today. Okay, are you talking? Uh, are you talking about? Um, I, I talked to some people before about a week or two ago. They mentioned the Overton window. I've heard other people talk about uh, you know a pendulum, kind of dictating which way society goes. Are you talking about kind of a shift from more leftist to rightist, or are we talking about some kind of a different thing? Uh, okay, I'm talking about more like in psychoanalysis perspective, you know, analysis of the masses. In what kind of perspective? Psychoanalysis. In, in psychoanalysis, you're talking uh, yeah. so a psychoanalysis of civilizations shifting. Uh, can you give me, um, well, tell me your thoughts on it. It'll give me a better idea of kind of where you want to go with this. Okay. I'm from Russia, and where, the way I look into Western Europe in general is like, it's like a Greece or Rome before it falls down. What main scene is coming out is uh, perversion and uh, distorted uh, perception of reality dominates over uh, healthy and uh, normal perception of reality. Something like that. Okay. I, I, I've heard this um, kind of brought up before. I think there's a video on YouTube called Babylon Before Hitler. Um, I, I know people have brought it up in classical cases. You're talking about Rome. You're talking about kind of the degeneracy of society before it collapses? Yes. Okay. Um, and I see it not like a bad thing. It's for you to decide, like a member of Western civilization, obviously, I'm more like Eastern Europe, Eastern side of the world. But in your case, I mean like Western civilization in general, it's going to be... As I see it, okay, it's not a prophecy or some kind of bullshit. It's just my thoughts on the topic. No, so no, that, the, that's fine. Um, I, I guess the way I kind of look at it is I, I can see that happening. It seems like the more, the more prosperous a society becomes and the uh, more progressive a society becomes, the closer it approaches the point of collapse. It, it seems like the, the more well-off people are, they have time and energy to basically dedicate towards things that aren't necessary for survival. Um, it, it, it's hard to explain. I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting conversation, but I, I can kind of see what you're talking about. Um, I, I would think, to give you an example, I guess, uh, there is a anime I actually like called Legend of the Galactic Heroes. And they talk about, in one of the episodes, oh, like fuck. 80 or 82, they talk about the fall of Earth. And they talk about what, what led to uh, Earth collapsing. And it was society becoming decadent. It was nobody cared about morality anymore. Everybody was a narcissist. They, they didn't have any shame anymore. People would have sex openly. They do drugs openly. They embraced violence on a, uh, just an epidemic level. And it, it led to the collapse of society. And even though it's an anime, granted, you know, little uh, Chinese girl cartoons, it does kind of reflect what people, I guess, fear or what they see kind of repeating throughout history. The more, again, I go back to the more prosperous and the more progressive a society becomes, the closer it comes to collapse. I don't know why that is, but it just seems to happen. Maybe because people are so well off, they feel that others should be well off, and so they allow uh, almost dangerous minority opinions to become acceptable or the norm. And those have negative repercussions for society as a whole, for a culture or a civilization as a whole. Um, I, I don't know where it's going to go with Europe, but I mean, I look at certain countries in Europe, and it, it's scary. You look at a Sweden, you look at a, a Britain, and you kind of see them embracing this almost um, culturally suicidal ideology of multiculturalism. And let's just open the borders to everybody. Let's not talk about problems that maybe originate from a... Uh, another country or another culture, we'll just sweep it under the rug. If we have this idealized uh, rainbow version of what reality should be, surely it will become that. But it's having a harmful impact. I mean, my God, Sweden with its rape rates, uh, Britain's got its own shit. Look what's going on in Germany. Um, I don't know what that means for America. I think this upcoming election is going to have a, a really big impact. It's going to have, uh, it's going to direct the next couple of decades, I guess is the best way to put it. If you get somebody like Trump in, I don't know what that means, really. I think there'll be pushback against certain elements of that. If you get somebody like Hillary in or Bernie in, it's probably going to get really bad. Um, so I, that's that's my opinion on it. Did you have more you wanted to follow up on? 
Uh, I think it's not about being progress. By the way, the way in in the West people call themselves progressives, it's like an ultra propaganda thing. They self identify as progressive, while at the same time they uh, put forward perversion, uh, individualism, which is regressive in itself. So it's kind of uh, for me it's like if I'm a Christian and I'm call myself a righteous man. Everyone call me righteous man by default. That's just another thing. But what I think is um, this is your choice. Like uh, for a Western society, you are not doomed. You just have to, as a way, um, develop and go back to traditionalism. Uh, the way it's described in, uh, you know, Julius Evola. Well, I think what you'll see happen, um, it just as a hypothetical situation, if you had something like um, Trump win, I, I think right now there's an undercurrent in America. For, for a while now, I'd say for a good 20 to 30 years, it, it seems like Americans have been ashamed of being American. The idea that we could be nationalistic or have pride in our country and our history, it, it's kind of been forced on us. I don't know if that it completely corresponds and correlates to the rise of political correctness, but it is something that has happened. Um, I, I think with somebody like Trump, or at least the people supporting him, what you're seeing is our people want to be proud of the country again. They want to be nationalistic. You know, when you talk about nationalism, people get this idea that you're talking about fascism. Oh my God, how could you be nationalistic? Obviously, you're talking about fascism. You, you must be like Adolf Hitler. But there is a point where you can be proud of your country. You can be proud of what your country has accomplished, its history, um, the things that it's capable of. Uh, well within reason. I, and I see that there's a potential there for people kind of bringing it back or taking pride in being American again, not completely being self-deprecating when they talk about being American. Uh, as far as your point with the progressive thing, I, I agree. Uh, people in, um, in the West do use it or misuse it from how I would see it originally being intentioned to be used. You look at Teddy Roosevelt, you know, when he ran for president, Bull Moose, he was talking about what a progressive was, the progressive party. And for him, it's very different than what it is now. It almost has become a dirty word to say progressive. So I, I get what you're saying with that. There, there probably is a difference between how people in the West use it and how people in the East use it. But over here, what's typically associated with progressivism are, I'd almost say, 20-something-year-old SJWs, very liberal, very leftist, um, very anti-country, very multicultural. Uh, anything that has a traditional value is bad. Anything that's classical is bad. Uh, you know, we must embrace the next new thing and it must come from a source outside of ourselves. And I, I think that really is one of the big shifts or one of the big splits between kind of that progressivism <coughs> and the reawakening of, uh, I guess, the political right that you're seeing in America is people don't feel like they need to be ashamed and they don't feel like they need to look outside of themselves to make their country great or to accomplish great things. Uh, sorry, I kind of went on for a, a little while there, but um, uh, go ahead. Uh, the way I see nationalism only can work is if it biophilic nationalism. Not, uh, you know Eric Fromm? He was a socialist, collectivist, Buddhist, it's all bullshit, you can put it aside. But he made this uh, interesting paradigm paradigm or how do you call it split on necrophilia which is he sees it as wider than just uh, a sexual perversion and biophilia meaning uh, uh, leaning towards uh, the ne ne necrophilia death of something and biophilia the life and development of something uh, biophilic if I can call it nationalism would be not uh, you know kill the blacks, close the borders, but develop your own culture. If you want, uh, for example, white American, European culture to prevail, instead of uh, fighting and killing someone else, uh, you should develop your culture from starting from the family. You can argue with that, but family is the basis of every society, every social circle and social structure. Uh, you must have a lot of kids, basically, and raise them in a certain culture. It's going to be hard. 
it's gonna be very challenging and, and shit. But at the end, you're gonna get results. Uh, the way I see Muslims coming into Europe, uh, probably coming into America and Mexicans coming into America, this is a natural exchange. If you gonna fail, if European white culture gonna fail and with this birth rates, it's gonna fail eventually. It's gonna be like uh, barbarians coming into Greece uh, and barbarians coming into Rome. Uh, you know, eventually they're gonna just replace the uh, dead culture. So, well, right. Is... I I would say um, with your well, especially in the Roman example. Uh, you know, I, I think Europe and America and the West in general is at the appeasement stage. You know, before before the barbarians, so to speak, uh, sacked uh, these these old empires, uh, they were appeased for a long time with with large amounts, large sums, and I, that's kind of how I see multiculturalism. I agree with you that if you want to build a strong country, it should be creative, not destructive. But I I, I think what people in America, at least, or people like Donald Trump and people who agree with him see as part of necessary to build a strong country is first kind of cutting off this idea of multiculturalism and putting a stem at least for a while on immigration it's almost like they feel lost like they don't people nowadays don't know what american is anymore and so they're trying to get a handle on it to see where they need to start building from and they feel that part of what is necessary to kind of do that is to stop so much of the immigration coming into the country the illegal immigration, especially, uh, coming into the country. I also agree with you about the family unit being core to building up a great society. When when you look at the, when you look at the problem, when you look at the problem with education in America, part of it is there is no community anymore. There is no family involvement anymore. Kids are pretty much thrown to the state, and they are at the whims of the state for how well they do. Uh, without that kind of community support, without the family support, they falter and they fail and they're sucked into this ridiculous notion of what common core is. They're, they're taught that getting the wrong answer is okay, that they don't really need to know how things are, that their best guess and their best feelings are what are important. Um, and, and so yeah, I agree with you in that regard. Uh, I'm reading the chat. Yeah, people who insult me can go fuck my, yourself. Oh, oh, there, there, there you go, chat. People who yeah. people who insult him can go. Don't fuck with a stalker, chat. It's a very, it's yeah, a very, yeah. it's a very bad idea. <laughs> um, so essentially, uh, this is my thought. As uh, you, so what, by, by the way, don't rely on government. Don't rely on any uh, so so oriented programs or something. You have to build your own community uh, by yourself. Is uh, you do this, or you're gonna be replaced culturally by Mexicans, by Muslims, by any third world country, and they gonna like we still have Roman culture, Roman ar ar architecture, and other stuff. They gonna have your stuff as a relic, maybe even worship it culturally and ethically. Right. I think I'm done. Oh, okay. Well, you know, and, and again, I think that kind of goes back to. Um... At least in America, I can only really speak for America and kind of guess as to Europe. But there has been a breakdown of community. There has been a breakdown of the family unit. Um, that doesn't really exist anymore. I, I think, too, partially what the fear is with all this immigration and illegal immigration, and you're talking about one culture supplanting another, is we see a declining birth rate, especially in a lot of Western nations. They're, they're below the subfertility rate. You know, they're 2.1 kids, or, or below the 2.1 kids. I can't remember exactly what America is. But when you look at a lot of these countries or cultures that are importing people that are immigrating over, their birth rates are much, much, much higher. And so I think um, part of the fear is that they're going to just, they're going to be outbred, that these other groups are going to have more kids. And because they have more kids, their culture is going to be stronger and it's going to spread further. And so I think that that's one of the fears. But I, I appreciate you coming on. Um, yeah. it, it was a good talk. Um, so I, I'll let you go. I'm going to jump on to somebody else here. Uh, anything else okay. you wanted to say in closing? Go Orthodox Christian or go home. <laughs> okay. All right. Take it easy. Okay. All right. Well, uh, that was a good way to start it off. We had a stalker on and I see the chats talking, uh, uh ass load of shit. That's always fantastic. I, I, I also, I see a lot of people sending uh, contact requests. 
I will get to them. If it sits there for a while, just uh, just hold on for a bit. I'm just going to try to cycle through the list as best as I can. All right. I'm going to try this gentleman next. Hello? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, can you can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're you're live on stream. Uh, how do you how do you want me to address you? Um, I don't know. Uh, I guess. Do you want me just to go with Assad? Yeah, Assad's good. Okay, Assad. Well, uh, welcome to the Meadowcast. Uh, what what would you like to talk about? What should we j jump into? Well, I'd like to kind of bridge the gap between the last guy and what he was talking about, and the Muslim issue. Okay, go for it. So, in my mind, society has been degenerating for hundreds of years. And on the course we've set ourselves, we're already going down the toilet, basically. And the way I like to see it is with this immigration issue. We're already going to get destroyed in the next 50 years because, in Europe particularly, they've built up the welfare state to the point where their debt is going to outweigh their GDP. So once that happens, they're gone already. But at the moment, they're introducing all these immigrants who are taking advantage of that and not earning anything for the society. So I'd like to see it as like kind of a fire, and the Muslims are the gasoline. So as Western culture is completely obliterated, we're introducing another culture which is much stronger than ours. And it's only going to increase the rate at which we get we go extinct. Okay, so you see them kind of as coming in to not necessarily start the process of it failing because that's already going, but usurping the culture that's already there and replacing what's already there, taking over European culture, perhaps taking over American culture because they're just stronger. They're more numbers uh, and they're more, I, I don't know, aggressive in uh, propagating their ideologies and their culture. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah, well, if you look at migrants in general or immigrants, if you have like an Italian immigrant or a Mexican immigrant, the general rule of thumb is that after three generations, they'll be assimilated completely into society. But when you have Muslims who are praying five times a day over every generation, that's not going to leave them. So even if you've had people living here for 120 years, they're still going to be fundamentally Muslim and they're still going to want Sharia law in place. So you see the uh, the Muslim part of it being uh, stronger than a national heritage. I mean, when somebody comes in, they're going to spread the idea of being a Muslim in Islam more than they would say, oh, I'm from South Africa, or I'm from Saudi Arabia, or I, I you know, Iran. That's not the culture I'm, I'm trying to push forward. We're all kind of united under this Muslim culture, and that's the predominant one. That's the one that's going to be pushed on Europeans in the West. Well, if you look at suicide rates, this is a good example. Number one on the list per 100,000 people is South Korea, which is considered a Western nation at its heart and one of the more like great societies the West has created. And on the very bottom is Saudi Arabia. So you look at our culture and that we've essentially given up the heritage of Christianity for this welfare state where we can get whatever we want and it's made us more unhappy in fact so you're then introducing these people who actually have a reason to live other than getting money and buying stuff and they're taking advantage of that so when a man goes to court in Canada or Europe and he says I don't care about the Bible I want to swear upon the Quran you know that where his allegiance is so so do, you, society do you think a part of the problem then is, so it kind of sounds like you're addressing two things. Do you think part of the problem with Western society is that it's become almost wholly uh, materialistic, that it, it doesn't see anything as being a higher purpose or a greater calling, whether it be culture or religion or anything, uh, compared to somebody from the Middle East who, who thinks that Islam is the center point of life, that money and everything else takes a back seat to that. Is that kind of what you're getting at? What I'm getting at is that 
with the problems already in place, the Muslims act as a catalyst in that they're only increasing the process. So we have, I do agree with what you're saying and what you just said, in that we have no higher thing to look for other than money, basically. If you look at the media and the news, all we really care about is the sales, or at the very least, that's what they're trying to permeate. So when these people who come in with the specific goal of increasing their, uh, what's the word, increasing their gasp of grasp upon the country they live in, that only makes the process worse. Okay. Um, in regards to the religious aspect, kind of when we're talking about Muslims, um, do you think the West would be better off if it was more religious? I mean, do you think that would act as a buffer? Do you see that as a, a solution well, you, to this? If you lined up two graphs, and on one it was the increase at which our debt, gross national debt, is increasing, and the rate at which Christians are decreasing, they might line up. I'm not going to imply that if there are more Christians, we'd be in a better situation but that could certainly be a part of it because we no longer have a goal or something to strive for. Now, do you see that that potential goal? I guess could that be secular in nature, or in nature could it be nationalism? Could I, I guess what I'm getting at is when you present the problem as being kind of we've got these immigrants coming in, uh, they have this dedicated religion, they're pushing this religion, and it's superseding and taking over our culture. Would the solution to that then be again? Would it become becoming more religious? on our own, or would it be some kind of a higher purpose, whether that's nationalism or some kind of philosophy or morality, but something to unify the people of whatever group is being kind of outpaced by the immigrants? Well, at this point, you can't really expect us to rewrite the rate at which religion has been decreasing. So I look at like someone like Trump as the more valid solution to this problem. We could rally behind the blue collar worker and hard work and we could rally behind the fact that now we are overcoming the media. So at the very least, we can say over the years, media has become more and more left-wing liberal. And if you look at Trump in every one of his rallies, he always mentions how you're going to misinterpret everything he says. So at the very least, we need to begin to question our society rather than look at well, we need to become nationalist. We just need to start thinking logically again, and then once that has been accomplished, we can begin to say, okay, look at these Muslims. This is a very large problem. Okay. All right. Well, uh, is there anything you want to close this up with? I'm going to cycle on to the next guy. Anything you want to leave the uh, audience with? Um, I just want to say that you should think logically in everything you do. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Well, thank you for coming on, Assad. Um, Maybe I'll have you on uh, the next the next Meadowcast. It's every fourth one, so people can call in. I'll have a okay. better I'll have a better system for the next one. I'm going to get a Skype number so people can just call okay. directly in. But take it easy. All right. Bye. Okay. So Assad believes <laughs> Assad Assad believes we need to think logically in everything we do, and the stalker from earlier thinks we need to uh, build our society up from a uh, the family unit and become self reliant rather than having government force kind of a, a unity upon us. All right, I'll jump to the next caller here. Hopefully we get somebody on. Let's see who we got. And it looks like that person is not available. All right. I'm going to just start accepting uh, requests. I've got a, a backlog here. Oh, we might have somebody. Hello? Well, I'll give it an A for effort. That was a that was an A for effort. All right, let's jump along here. People are taking bets as to who's going to get called on. I, I don't know if Kyle's going to to uh, want to come on. I don't know if he's even left or listening today. All right, ringing, and that is a no go. All right, 
again, just remember there is a delay, so you're going to want to look at the Skype window to see if a call comes through. Hello? Hey, what's up? Oh, hey, do you want to turn the uh, the stream down in the background? What's up? Uh, do you uh, do you want to turn? Oh, this? yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll turn it off. Okay. Okay. All right. So, how how do you want me to address you? Uh, Juju Man. Okay, Juju Man. What would you like to talk about? Um. Well, I just kind of wanted to build off of what the last guy was saying. Okay, go for it. <coughs> I think. Um, I think the. <coughs> I think the pro the main problem he's right in that it, it has to do with a lack of Okay. Uh call cut out there. Uh let me try again. I'll try to bring it back on here, Juju Matt. Okay. Well, we'll never know what the problem is. We'll never know what the the lack of a problem is. The, <laughs> Juju, man, I get it. I need to pay you shekels to find out what the problem is. This is a this is a hard sell. That's what you're doing to me. Okay. Try the uh, next individual here. See if we get somebody. Hello. Hello. Uh, well, welcome to uh, Meadowcast. How, uh, what would you like me to refer to you as? Uh, Quinn, holy shit. Oh, wow, Quinn, I didn't expect that. Yes. Uh, uh, okay, well, Quinn, holy shit, what would you like to talk about? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, shit, I was not prepared for this. Um, uh, I think that the guy who was supporting Rand Paul uh, two weeks ago, was it? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it was the, yeah, two weeks ago, that would have been right. I think he did kind of a shitty idea, or a shitty idea, a shitty job of representing Rand Paul's ideas. Okay, well, uh, if you want to talk about Rand Paul's ideas, go for it. Um, uh, he did, uh, shit, I was not prepared for this at all. Um, <laughs> well, you can't, you can't call out the Rand Paul guy and then bomb after doing so. Fair enough. Um, he was talking about the 14.5 percent flat tax is the main thing about his campaign and uh, that's a big thing but I don't think that's the main part okay what do, what do you feel is more what do you feel is his most important plank in his platform aside from the flat tax governmental reform and uh, uh, and uh, ending the NSA spying like in, t in its entirety. Oh, okay. I, I'm hearing a first off. I'm hearing a little bit of an echo. If you got the stream open, if you want to just mute it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, and then uh, okay. So what about his government reform? Uh, what what does he talk about in regards to that that you think is uh, really appealing to voters or would be something they'd be interested in? Uh, justice reform. Okay. Um, as well as putting in place term limits. Okay. So talk a little bit about each. Uh, what what does he say in regards to justice reform and term limits on which office? Um, term limits on Senate and Congress. Okay. Uh, what is he? What terms. is he? Two terms, so he wants to limit it, just like the president. Then. Exactly. Okay. Um, what is his justification for that? Does he think they're in power too long and can become corrupt, or does he just yes. think it makes sense? Um, that and the fact that it keeps old ideas in power for a very long time, which means you get people from the '90s and the '80s who don't know what the people want. Um, oh, I, okay, first off, I still hear the, I still hear the stream in the background, man. Yeah, sorry. Um, okay, my computer decides to be cooperative. Uh, I'm just going to mute Google Chrome. Okay. Open volume mixer and oh, that's turning it up. That's awful. Okay, there we go. Okay, are we good? Yep. Okay. <laughs> 
Um, so, okay, in regards to term limits, he wants to limit them to two terms for both House of Representatives and the Senate? Um, I'm not sure about House of Representatives, actually. But I know for Senate, he wants to uh, limit to, it, it to two six-year ter uh, six terms. Now, you present it as him feeling that if people uh, from a previous generation were to run for office, they'd be too out of touch. But if, exactly. they, but if they get the votes, though, doesn't that mean the people that voted for them feel they are in touch? Um, yes and no. Um, because a, the majority of the population, a lot of times at least, don't vote in Senate elections. They in, ignore them entirely. Um but uh, you bring up a valid point, and I would agree, but I'm saying that's a big part of his campaign. Um, because it it kind of reminds I, me, um, there was a show from the... I'm on my social security one day. I'm, I'm Quinn's father. Oh, hello. <laughs> so I have Quinn, holy shit, and Quinn's father. All right, Quinn's father. Uh, what were you yeah. saying in regards to that? Wait, I, I, I He's like a Trump the sort of continuity in, in the government. Because I, I want Social Security one day. I mean, I'm, I'm 45, and um, um, I, I like the idea of the government not changing radically every too often. I, I, think, I think there's probably been too much change over the last couple of decades uh, with regards to what our government has done, and, and things need to, like, slow the fuck down. Um, you know, even even Obamacare, I have a lot of misgivings about it. I, I run I run a construction business, and 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 that shit has wiped me out. I mean, um, yeah, uh, it, it 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 makes it impossible for a small business to basically exist. You you have to scale your business to a certain size if if you want to continue to exist. It, it makes sort of a minimum size. Um, in in spite of my misgivings with it, like. If we would just leave it alone for a while and let people figure out how it works without wanting to change it all the time, like every year all of these issues get brought up in Congress and they, they never leave it alone, um, then we can sort of figure out, you know, how to, I, I don't want to say game the system, but basically game the system and, and then, you know, leave it stay for five, ten years. And and then everybody understands how to how it works, and then the economy can sort of fit it in. But instead, we're in this situation where the the thing changes. You know, right now the way they phased Obamacare, and I, I guess it has to be phased in. They can't do it all at once. But the requirements for it have changed every year, and that requires us changing our business model every year. Well, I, I know that um, I know Obamacare is hitting a, a lot of businesses, and I know that they're uh, imposing a tax fee essentially. If, if you don't uh, get a plan under it. Um, I, I know people personally that have had their rates just shoot up, and I know a couple of people that own businesses that have complained about kind of the impact that it's had on that. Um, I guess kind of going back to what your, your son was saying, what Quinn Holy Shit was saying, uh, in regards to the term limits thing, I, you know, if people elect them, I would, I would feel that that means that they're in touch enough to get the votes. It almost yeah, reminds me of, there was an, uh, there's a show called Sliders from the 90s. And in one of the episodes, they go to a world, right, it's uh, parallel dimensions and shit. They go to this world where Howard Stern became president and basically imposed uh, term limits that you couldn't run for any office unless you were 20 years old. So is, is Rand Paul kind of saying that we need to almost limit the age of people running? Like, we'd keep it forever just 20 and 30-year-olds? He, does he want to decrease the age of people that can uh, run for Senate, that can, people can run for House of Representatives too then? I certainly think the millennial generation would like that. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was nice meeting you, Joe. Oh, yeah, nice meeting you, too. Um, I, I think it has more to do with the corruption uh, part of it. Um, but I think even he would agree that there are exceptions to the rule, but I think the reason he wants uh, just a general case uh, term limits is because you can't make exceptions for people who are good and still with the times. Um, for example, his father, Ron Paul, stayed in office for something like 20 years, and I don't think anyone would say that Ron Paul was a corrupt politician. Um, well, that was, that was one of the things, right, was the term limit, uh, limiting term limits. What was, you said the other was justice reform. What was he talking about in regards to justice reform that you think is important uh, that voters should know? 
reforming his drug pol uh, reforming the drug policies. So no, wait. Before uh, we get into this, do I have another Kyle? Or are you going to tell me that the people that do illicit drugs are doing it for purely medical reasons? Or we no, are... that's retarded. Okay. All right. What what are we talking about then? Uh, he wants to make it so that um, nonviolent drug offenders uh, don't get prison time. Uh, well, in most circumstances. Are, are we talking then just purely about users of small yes. amounts, or are we talking about the guy that's dealing uh, coke down the street? Um, Nonviolent as in... Basically, if you didn't do anything other than uh, sell or consume drugs, then you don't get thrown in prison. So if you broke open someone's car so, and wait, 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 so, their stereo and bought meth, then if, if you're you didn't, if you didn't do nothing, is what is that what you just told? <laughs> so if you do, uh, what you want to call these the didn't do nothing laws, where it just <laughs> innocent people just snorting some meth, they haven't really interfered with anybody, uh, they don't get any jail time. Is this because he thinks that there's too large of a, a prison population, or there's too much money invested in it, or he, he just thinks it's um, not important to, that we put these kind of offenders in jail and we should wipe the laws out in regards to that? Well, I, he doesn't think, uh, well, at least publicly, he doesn't think that we should uh, legalize all drugs other than aside from marijuana. Um, but uh, he wants to make it so people who didn't hurt other people don't get prison time effectively. Okay. So, and these are the two, these are the two pieces of his platform that you think, are, I guess, are more appealing or more important or equally as important to his flat tax rate that the other Rand Paul supporter had brought up. Yeah. Uh, I think the flat tax is very important. Um, but I will say, there's something even more important, and that's his uh, getting rid of the payroll tax. Um, I would assume you know what the payroll tax is. Um, mm -hmm. About oh, you do not? No, no. I said yes. Uh huh. I, I, okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, the government takes about two percent of everyone's money, and he wants to get rid of that entirely, so that a seven dollars twenty-five cents minimum wage is actually seven dollars and twenty-five cents, not five dollars and eighty cents. Um, for example. Okay. I have to ask, uh, this is a little off topic, you said your dad, uh, who's in the background, now he's a Trump supporter. Yes. So how, how is that at the family dinner table, when you're arguing, <laughs> when you're arguing Rand Paul and he's arguing Donald Trump? Um, well, uh, earlier, before I, right before I joined the call, he was like, I've decided I like Trump just because he irritates people who are wrong. <laughs> and, um, but basically I've come to the conclusion that as much as I would love for Rand Paul to be president, I'm basically uh, setting my bets on a Trump-Paul ticket, because that would be amazing. Um, especially if it was something like Trump doesn't really have influence over Senate, whereas Rand Paul does. Rand Paul is sort of the get-shit-done guy in Senate. Um, oh, now, I have to ask this, too, because chat's bringing it up quite incessantly. Uh, because so you're a younger Rand Paul supporter. Your dad's an older Trump supporter. Now they're yeah. saying he sounded drunk, and they're saying you sound high. So do we have like a generational gap going on here between you two? He's probably drunk, but I am not high. You are not high. You have not imbibed any of the uh, any any herbal substances, is what you're telling us. <laughs> uh, no. Okay. All right. Well, is there anything you want to close this out with? I'm gonna I'm gonna jump to the next guy here. Anything you want to uh, say in closing? All right. Um, I think a lot of millennials and not just millennials but a lot of people overlook Rand Paul sort of based on the idea of he can't win which means he doesn't get supporters because people don't think he can win which leads to well see uh, I, I thought people overlooked Rand Paul because he's so damn short it's easy to overshoot him <laughs> that was that was what I thought I mean Jeb Bush needs uh, to stand on his toes to stand shoulder to shoulder with Trump Rand Paul he needs like a fucking stepladder I'm just saying <laughs> Well, he's still better than Cuck Bush. Um, he um, has high in polar numbers, yeah. He, he, he is ahead of Jeb, yeah. who has spent 70, 80 million. He's still better than the Glockman. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure meeting you, uh, Jim. All right, well, you have a good one. Uh, enjoy your weekend. Sure. Say hi to your dad for me. Take it easy. <laughs> yes, I can, I can see your uh, comments, chat, by the way. Um, 
I will I will try to bring up any issues you have as we're having a discussion. But uh, so we had a Rand Paul supporter on, and his father a Donald Trump supporter. A little bit of a generational gap. I, I have a feeling Dad's probably going to see his candidate get the Republican nomination, whereas the son might not. I, I don't know if Rand can really turn this around at this point with the numbers that he has. It, you know, Ted Cruz looks like he's the only one that's really a contender against Trump at the moment, but who knows? Things could play out differently as the months goes on. Uh, let's try to get some more people in here. Calling up somebody else. Hello. Hello. Uh, you're you're on the Metalcast. Uh, how do you want me to refer to you? Uh, Coral works. Uh, did you say Carl or Coral? Coral. Coral. All right, Coral. Well, what would you like to talk about? Uh, I don't know. I'm Canadian, so I shit post with my mouth a bit. Uh, really, I wanted to be like, shit. Uh, I don't know. I'm getting stage fright. <laughs> you, but you're bombing on me here a little bit, Coral. <laughs> <I know. laughs> No, really, uh, I wanted to say that I really like your streams and everything. I don't really have much to add okay. with the whole uh, contributing to political discussion. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I think that's it. Really, I'm, a, I'm, I'm avidly a Trump supporter of sorts because of uh, won't the that, image of it all. Won't that get you killed in Canada if you openly <laughs> support Trump? That's That's what I've heard, that they will hunt you down in the street and kill you. Uh, I've had people say to me, oh, well, you know, if you're, if Trump gets in, won't that cause more stress for the states? Because you have people uh, kind of go out and out of their way to be like, no, we're going to bring Muslims in and we're just going to kind of spite you for it in a sense. Now, Chad is screaming at me that you sound high. For some reason, anybody who's under the age of 30, <laughs> the, anybody under the age of 30 that comes onto the stream is apparently stoned as hell. Uh, so you're you're not you're not stoned at the moment. No, I'm not. I, I'm actually. Well, I, I was joking with my friend uh, uh, about dude weed because you know the whole Canadian thing. Oh, because you uh, have a Trudeau in office, yeah. The the pot smoking stripper. No, nah, but I, I I've actually never smoked any drugs, and I wouldn't say I'm an advocate for or against drugs. I think people should do what they want, but. I'm I, I'm not one of those people who are like, yeah, people do it for medical reasons. No, no, people do it to get fucking high, but uh, I think like, there's the exceptions, of course, but uh, nah, that, 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 that's that's dumb. I, I'm, I'm sorry, but was it Kyle, right? Yeah, that would be Kyle. That, that, was, that was fucking retarded. That was, um, <laughs> you know, it, I, I mean, I, I, uh, I can understand wanting to give people the benefit of the doubt. But really, no. Feels good. I <sighs> haven't been high, but you know, from what I've, what I've talked to people, that's why they do it. All right, Coral. Well, uh, I'm glad you like the stream. Uh, I'll pass on the message to Kyle that he's fucking retarded. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Have a good one. Thank you. <laughs> Chat. Come on, guys. It's the current year. It is the current year. Come on now. Try somebody else here. And it looks like we got no answer here. All right, moving on. Hey, Jim. Uh, hey, how do, uh, you're on the you're on the Meadowcast. How do you want me to refer to you? Uh, refer to me as Jan or Jan. I'm another cook, and uh, I wanted to pass through that we're giving Captain Sweden a run for his money. Are you now? Um, yeah, on the 16th of January, there's this event uh, by the Socialist Party, the Young Democrats, Red, and uh, other socialist lefty uh, organizations to wear miniskirts on Dam Square in the middle of Amsterdam. There's As a protest to the cologne thing. Okay, so they're all going to wear miniskirts. Are these men that are dressing in miniskirts, or are these just women? Or yes. Women? So just it, it's it's just a bunch of it's a bunch of men getting in miniskirts because they think what is what is the statement exactly? I think it's because well the the official statement was that uh, some girl in Turkey got raped and five Turkish cucks decided to dress up 
uh, like fags and parade, you know, in the middle of the city. So the Netherlands thought, hey, our daughters are getting molested, our wives are getting molested, let's dress up and suck the, you know, uh, hostility out of these immigrants. I so, think that's the best idea. So how many dicks are these young men in skirts going to have to suck to, to appease the immigrants that have shown up in the Netherlands? Well, up to now, it's like uh, 250 people, around 250 people are definitely dressing up in miniskirts. Um, even uh, pretty famous radio guys are uh, also parading in miniskirts. And you wouldn't believe how middle-aged women are salivating over the idea of these, you know, mid-twenties guys just parading in skirts for basically, yeah, uh, how is this exactly preventing rape? I guess only if they bend over. It's <laughs> Captain Sweden. It, it sounds like Captain Sweden. So are, are they even addressing what happened in Cologne? Are they saying the, the forbidden words that uh, there were men that were Arab and North African, they were Muslim that were doing these attacks, or is that not something, is that verboten? They won't talk about that. How dare you? Not every immigrant does this, you know? Oh, I, I should just... check my privilege. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. This is just, you know, an expression of how men like to dress in skirts. Now, I tried uh, co-opting it earlier by uh, saying that it's transphobic, but sadly, they didn't take the bait. Uh, uh, it, it, yeah, it, it's going to be a tough sell. Um, I don't know how good of an anti-rape policy dressing up like a woman and trying to get raped instead of them is going to succeed in the Netherlands. Uh, well, how, uh, what kind of immigration do you guys have there? What are you dealing with exactly? Well, I live actually pretty close to a, a pretty get a big camp uh, of immigrants and you know most of these guys really do come from Syria. They're, uh, I see very little groups of you know lonely men. The lonely men brigade is mostly in the inner city and I just live uh, in the outskirts and I do see some families and babies with you know wounds in their face and the people actually seem happy. But I don't think anyone is disputing actual war refugees coming over. I think the idea was Pakistanis and Eritrean guys coming over, that that is the problem. Well, yeah, I, I would agree with that. Um, I, I think that they brought in a lot of people that aren't who they think they are. Um, and I think that a lot of those individuals are causing a lot of havoc right now. I mean, I know the, the numbers in Cologne are rising. It was like 120 when it was initially reported. Somebody said earlier today that it was like up to 350 um, reports filed in multiple other cities too. It's not just in Cologne. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm a little stunned. I don't understand exactly what kind of pushback that is, dressing up in skirts. I don't, I don't know what that... Are they angry at the mayor uh, who had said that women need to... They, they basically were asking for it. Is that what they're protesting? Well, well, that's one camp of it. Certainly the radio DJs uh, are doing that, 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 you know, it's victim blaming of some sort. But the dressing in skirts, I believe, at best, it's just so it shows... Eritrean and Pakistani guys that Dutch men are also available. I don't know. It just, you know, they take my body, violate the men, don't violate our women. I think that's the message. Yeah, I'm not sure what the hell's going on uh, up in Northern Europe and Scandinavia and everything. I, I don't understand why males in uh, <laughs> this collective society in these different countries are rolling over and taking it. it. It seems like there's a little bit of pushback happening now, but. Are, are are there a lot of, I guess, cultural Marxists? Are there a lot of SJWs and uh, what we refer to in America as kind of leftist or left-leaning liberals? Are, is that the majority of young men in these countries? Or what, what the hell's going on? Well, actually, the Netherlands is always known as to be quite laid back about everything. But the big problem is, is that uh, they're running the show. Like, not the main party that is now in control, but every party right now is basically very progressive in these type of things. And one of the big things that was quite an upset was that in the Rijksmuseum, which is where they uh, hold all the famous Rembrandt works, they would uh, start changing the definitions of paintings by no longer uh, saying nigger, if there was a nigger slave in the painting or something along that line. And that was the big you know, uh, acknowledgement to blacks that slavery, slavery did happen. So, so they're, they're yeah. language policing. Now, I, I know that uh, recently, I mean, this is just a, a, it's been in the news for a day or two, but Mein Kampf got reprinted. And there's been a big, a big argument about that. But the thing that I haven't heard a lot of people talk about, and it was brought up in a few articles, was when they, when they re-released it, uh, it's the yeah. annotated version. It's 2,000 pages. And 
you know, Mein Kampf originally is 800. So there, there are 1,200 pages of commentary on, on Hitler's work that are, are attempt to refute everything he says because they couldn't just reprint it. So it sounds kind of similar to going into, I, I guess, museums and fucking with paintings and redoing definitions because you can't present something as it originally was, it seems. Yeah, yeah, we have this, uh, like, uh, next to Christmas, we also have this holiday called Sinterklaas, and I think you probably know about it, that we have this figure called Black Pete, who yep. so is this, you know, helper. And uh, what seems to be, like, because this is, this is all American business in the Netherlands right now, that it's really like we're taking over the Black Lives Matter uh, model on blacks. Like, five years ago, you didn't even hear anything about this. And now we have people cosplaying in Black Panther stuff during, you know, our holidays. And what seems to be, like, uh, forgotten by everyone is that we worship black people. It's like one of the friendliest characters of our holiday. Have you, do you know even of another country that worships a fictional black character in a kind way? I don't. Do you, do you think that mentality is what's helped cuck your country, though? I mean, you're worshipping you're worshiping a black guy, so maybe, maybe that's where part of the problem comes from. Well, there's something in it for us, too. He gives us gifts. So, you know, I think it's kind of like Milo. They give us something and, you know... Well, see, that's... <laughs> that's something back. That's the difference between a black guy in the Netherlands. He breaks into your house to give you shit. In America, he breaks in to take shit. So, I mean, I guess that's a cultural difference between the West, uh, you know, you know what I mean, between those two countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he does take virginity, I suppose you could say, but... Well, those men's virginity, if they show up in skirts and bend over too much. Definitely. And I think that that could be the only uh, good, good counteraction to actually uh, make the narrative fit uh, towards Cologne is if uh, everyone would dress up like Moroccans or Algerians and start molesting these guys and calling them whores. That's the only way to combat this. Oh, I think they might enjoy that, but um, we'll, we'll see. You should try to film this if you can, or, or at least get some kind of footage, because I want to see how this turns out with 250 20-year-old uh, guys in skirts trying to protest some fucked up thing and thinking that that's going to, uh, to have an impact other than them getting their asses slapped uh, by immigrants. So it, it'll be interesting to see uh, how it turns out. Any, anything you want to say before we close out here? No, no, that was it. Thank you. All right, yeah, have a good one. Okay, bye. Well, it sounds like uh, multiculturalism is just spreading its love across all of Europe. Uh, <laughs> we'll see how that turns out. I really hope somebody gets footage of that. I, I don't understand what men dressing in skirts is going to accomplish. And it sounds like it's almost like they're trying to protest what the mayor said rather than what caused the incidents in the first place. So we'll, we'll see, but we'll try to get uh, somebody else on here. Let's see how it goes. Hello? Hey. Uh, you're, you're on the Meadowcast. If you want to turn the stream down in the background, uh, how do you want me to refer to you? Uh, okay, hold on. Just Ben. Okay, Ben. Well, what would you like to talk about? Uh, I would like to talk about, like, Hungary in general. I don't know how much of the situation you know about it. Or well, have you been reading the news? Uh, I, 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 I know a little bit. Uh, I don't know how much, uh, probably not as much as I should know, and I, I don't know what the viewers know. So why don't you just kind of walk us through it and give us the background. Okay, so, so what happened is that we have a right-wing government here in Hungary that's been elected. It's called Fidesz. And they've been being called on poll as an uncucked <laughs> uh, political group. Okay. Um, mostly because, well, people don't like a leader. Uh, because they uh, they didn't want to let through the refugees. And so what happened was that a lot of, well, it was twofold. One, that we didn't want to let them through, and those who the, we let them, we let through the border, or they went for our capital, Budapest, was basically, well, we didn't let them go for uh, Germany. So what happened was there was a lot of crowds on the border, on the southern border, um, and then there was a lot of crowd on Budapest. So what happened was that the Western media came in and basically politicized that we are not letting them go through uh, to Germany. And our leaders came basically saying, like, yeah, because we are the first hotspot in Schengen, 
which is basically the part where we are not supposed to <laughs> we are not supposed to let them through without getting them registered. So they're they're trying to immigrate uh, through your country essentially and on their way to yeah, Germany to yeah, go yeah. go rape what people in Cologne. Was, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what happened is that they go through Greece, Macedonia, and the other countries, but we didn't let them through. And what would happen is uh, the Western media would come here, and um, they would just say like, "We're racist and xenophobic," and no, we're abiding by the EU laws that they set up. And we would eventually let them through because they would uh, break out from the camps that we set up. <laughs> and then, actually, uh, I read the news about this, but I actually saw it uh, where Austrians and Germans would organize bus stoppers to get them through the border. <laughs> so, um, and now what's happening is we built a border, so they're now skipping Hungary and they're going through um, uh, the other places, Slovenia, Slovakia, through any way they can, and um, Croatia. So, how, how's, that, how's that working? I mean, and people in Hungary must be happy about this then. You don't have all these immigrants trying to come through your country to go, they're all in yeah. Slovenia now. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. Uh, no, the, the issue is that we still hate our politicians, um, basically because they're using this as a cover to... Well, they're good at foreign politics because of this, and we're really good friends with the Polish. Uh, but the internet politics is really bad. Like everyone's uh, Putin tier corrupt. Um, but some of them like the decisions that they have made. But the problem is that now we're in uh, a bit of a pickle because if we don't get a right wing government again in the next elections, they're just going to let everyone through. Um, same thing that happened with Poland, because Poland, before they had a left-wing government, but then they had a right-wing, and they were able to like not agree with the quotas. That's the uh, We've been also getting threats from the EU, at least, I don't know, some German politicians have been saying, like, if the money is good enough for us, then we should get all the refugees that they want to determine in the quotas. And just for the people uh, that are watching on stream that might not, I guess, understand the dynamics of the EU, Germany is kind of considered the the big financial player, right, in the EU? Germany has, I think Germany has the most money because they were the ones who gave out the most uh, loans. <laughs> and um... So they get they get everybody uh, tied up with these loans and then they can apply a little bit of pressure when it comes to yeah, something like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I've been also noticing is that Germany calls out uh, any kind of government that's right wing. So they called out our government as illiberal and same goes for the Polish ones. So as soon as it's not a left wing liberal me uh, government that lets everybody in, they just go friend they just go in a frenzy. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like an interesting situation. Do you think, I mean, you're, Hungary's not going to buckle, is it? It's not going to let the Germans whining change its mind and open their borders tomorrow, is it? No, because we already built a wall. And Romania is also thinking of building a wall. And uh, uh, Croatia and Serbia has been in a standoff because they keep shuffling the refugees all over the place. And Croatia has been called off like, by Germany to stop doing that. Because so, it's your responsibility to take care of them. So why do all these European countries take shit from Germany? It sounds like there's a lot of pushback, or a lot of countries just are tired of it. Why don't you all well, just collectively because, tell Germany to fuck itself? Well, because we can't, because um, because of the EU rules, because we have Schengen. So basically, Schengen is, um, I think, basically it's, a, it's a economic and it's a free for movement. So you can just move around within the countries. And I guess they don't want to break that up. Because if someone registers in a Schengen country, basically he can go anywhere. See, now um, I, I thought uh, in regards to you know unfettered uh, movement in the EU, I thought that was only for actual EU citizens. I mean, we're talking about immigrants from the Middle but East they, and but North they Africa. Get asylum. But, but if they go to Germany, uh, they get um, asylum. And that's why they want to go there. So, so wait, is, every, Cause, cause, is everybody going to Germany to get their EU passport so they can go shit up everybody else's country? <laughs> I think pretty much the fun thing. I saw some pictures in uh, in our train station um, where they were saying like they hold up they held up uh, signs by the kids saying like this is worse than Guantanamo. <laughs> 
it, it sounds like it, it, there's a, a real uh, a kind of entitlement uh, or sense of entitlement among these immigrants. I mean, I, I've seen stories where they were bitching that they didn't have good enough Wi-Fi or that they weren't getting Wait. the food they wanted to get. <laughs> We had stuff where um, they threw out the sandwiches because they had, um, I think, beef, the thing that they can't eat. So they threw out the sandwiches. But I actually went to one of these um, migrant aid um, collection points. They were pretty nice. Um, I think they were the most more peaceful ones. But what I keep hearing is once the winter ends, they're just going to keep coming. Um, and there's problems with Greece not holding up their end of the bargain because they're supposed to be the the first checkpoint for any immigrants trying to head to the EU. And what's happening now is Hungary, um, Poland, and I think Czechos uh, the Czechs have basically said that, okay, we're going to send uh, cops down there to maybe control their border, which I don't know what's happening down there, but this has been going on the news for half a year now. Well, it, it isn't, is, isn't Greece fucked into the dirt, though, economically? I mean, it <laughs> seems like it seems like Greece is already fucked enough. <laughs> I don't know. I, Take, I taking don't know an that. immigrant seems like doubling. It feels to me like... I, I hear a lot of people talk about uh, the immigrant situation and the financial situation in the EU, and it always fucking comes back to Germany. Somehow Germany is always involved. Somehow Germany is always fucking somebody over. I'm, I'm just... I guess I'm amazed. Um, you, that... you, you want to know, you wanna know, know the biggest fuck-up, though? Because Germany, I, I think the EU, I don't know, blocks some kind of pipeline from Middle East. And they're like, no, you can't have the pipeline because fuck it, EU regulations. But now, I just read the news a few months ago that, oh, well, they extended the northern pipeline from Russia to Germany. <laughs> so they're pretty much fucking over Eastern Europe for any alternative uh, pipelines. <laughs> well, now, isn't that, uh, you know, the, uh, talking about kind of the energy for Germany, I know that Putin and Russia um, kind of have their own little energy monopoly that supplies <laughs> Europe. Uh, so is Germany trying to basically fuck with Putin? It, it, it seems to me like Germany is trying to start World War Three. They're fucking with people in the EU. They're, they're what, fucking with Russia. They, I don't know what they want to do because Cameron now is basically saying, like, Hungary is awesome because they're upholding the rules. Um, it's a really big shit show, and I think we're kind of lucky for having a right-wing government at the same time, even though they're corrupt as Putin. So um, the problem is now um, we might get sanctions. I, I heard Poland might get something because they're trying to... Well, what kind of sanctions are they going to impose? What, Germany's not going to give you any sauerkraut? Like, oh, tough shit? <laughs> No, what what we've been hearing for the past half a year is, oh, you're not going to get EU money if you don't uh, uphold your end of the deal by upholding the EU quotas for the immigrants. <laughs> so they're they're actually telling you, we will cut off funding unless you take yeah. more immigrants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is fucking absurd. I, I don't know why. There has to be enough of you. There has to be enough countries in the EU that are just sick of it. Why not just break away and do your own little version of the EU well, and fuck the rest? Well, no, because we can't do that because we are shit. Like most of our politicians are corrupt. So even though we have a good foreign policy by not letting these people in, most of our people in Hungary, at least the ones I know, my colleagues, my friends, pretty much leave Hungary because, well, <laughs> it's a corrupt shithole. Most of Eastern Europe is sort of like that. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm <I'm> on. <laughs> Holy shit! Well, I, 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 I wish, I wish you, <laughs> I wish the people in Hungary good well, luck. One more thing, one mm -hmm. more thing, just a quick news for you. Go ahead. In Germany, there was a rally by Pediga, and the guy had a rape refugees uh, T-shirt on, and now I think he's gonna get arrested by the German police. So that's why you can't pretty much voice her. Um, well, that's right. They don't have free speech in Germany. You, also, you can't talk a, about certain things. You, I think you know about Cologne, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. there, there was a there was a counter protest on the sixth or fifth of January, but the police showed up. Four hundred police showed up against uh, the people in the population. So it's kind of weird. People are calling out, uh, calling it out that oh, you didn't have enough police for New Year's, but you have enough police to uh, subdue the German native population. <laughs> Yeah, it is crazy. I mean, I saw a couple of people tweeting out numbers from these these anti or these protests against the immigration issue in Germany. They had like thirty thousand. They had like thirty thirty five thousand people show up, but you didn't see a lot of uh, news coverage of it, which is kind of remarkable. No, no everybody called out the German news stations that they are uh, subverting the information. It, it feels like that. It, it feels like yeah, you, you just don't have free speech or even the European version of it in Germany. Well, yeah, Germany is weird. All right. Well, is there anything you want to close this out with? 
No, that's pretty much it. All right. Well, good good luck. Don't get caught, Germany. <laughs> yeah, keep, keep those borders closed. Good luck to you. Thanks. All right, take it easy. I feel like I'm running the fucking uh, United Nations here. I'm getting people from all over the place. I thought I'd just get a bunch of, just a bunch of Americans talking about beer and eagles and shotguns and shit. But we're, we're getting people from all over. Maybe we'll get somebody from China who speaks English, which would be remarkable. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure their internet blocks anything that uh, runs counter to the state. And their Sesame Credit. You're probably going to lose at least 100 points on your Sesame Credit if you were to call into a, an American stream from China. So I probably shouldn't keep my hope up for that. I will uh, try to pull somebody else here. And let's, uh, let's keep going. American stream from China. Hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> now, see, you got to be more imaginative than that. You had the name John Madden. I was expecting something related to John Madden. Well, I already had the other guy do that. You, you need to be, you need to up your game a little. Maybe some hardcore gay pornography sounds. I, I can't give you an A for effort on that, Mr. Madden. I'm gonna have to give you, I'm gonna have to give you a B on that. Ringing up somebody else here. Oh, it looks like we got a no answer on this one. Give him one more second. That is a no go. All right, moving along. I will have a better system set up for next time. By the way, I'm gonna have a a direct phone number through Skype that you can just call. It'd be much easier. I was just uh, too cheap and lazy to do it this time. Hello? Jim? Yeah, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I can hear you. Oh, holy shit. Are you, are you screaming through a wind tunnel? What am I listening <laughs> to? No, that's the air conditioner, actually. I, I, I'm going to have to cut you, man. I can barely hear you. Okay, I can turn it off. No, no, I mean your mic quality. It, it's like a, a, oh. a wind tunnel. Oh, well, I'm calling for my tablet, actually. Oh shit! I'm I'm, I'm sorry, Alex. I, I I talked to you, but yeah, it, the the audio is really distorted. I'll try you back later. Try see if you can adjust it a little bit. I'll give you a call in like uh, twenty or thirty. Try again. Cool. Okay. All right. We'll try another one here. This is turning out to be disastrous. All right. I'll just keep going. Fuck it. We will get somebody eventually. I, again, remember, if you're watching the stream, keep an eye on Skype. I'll accept their request and then call you up pretty much immediately. So you need to kind of have it open to be able to look at the the little window to see if it'll if it'll work. Oh well, I'll try this guy again. Hello. Hey. Okay. Uh, what do you want me to refer to you as? Uh, you can just call me Hat, I guess. All right, Hat. What would you like to talk about? Well, I uh, I want to talk about the definition of happiness, I guess, and its societal in its effects on society. Okay, so, go for it. Um, basically, um, so throughout the, the past few years, I've been reading like some philosophy like Plato and Aristotle and stuff like that. And their definitions of happiness are different from the modern definition. So it seems like the modern definition is happiness is pleasure. Like whatever pleasure you can get, that is what you should pursue and that is what happiness should be. And... It, it seems like, you know, that that's what humans, that's what humans want to pursue. All humans want to be happy. You know, there's not anyone who wants to be, you know, just sad all the time. So the Aristotelian um, definition of happiness is more so you gain happiness from your human nature, from fulfilling your human nature. And what human nature is, is all, all humans have 
of the ability to reason, the ability to think, the ability to process information. So what Plato and Aristotle attempted to do was to try to find what right reason was, what was good and what was bad. And they came up with, you know, the four virtues, like, uh, you know, wisdom, courage, um, wisdom, courage, justice, and, uh, and temperance. And through practicing these four virtues, through being a, a virtuous person, you are fulfilling your human nature. You were fulfilling what it means to be a human. And so with, with pursuing, pursuing pleasure, I mean, you're, you're doing nothing but kind of lowering yourself to an animal. Because the only thing an animal can do is to react off instincts. Well, I, I, I would agree. I mean, I, I can see what you're talking about. Uh, the last person that I really tell you know, the last modern figure, I guess I would say, that I'm familiar with that really put forward the idea of kind of virtues would be Benjamin Franklin. I mean, he had his own his own version kind of going off the Aristotle model, or, or what you're talking about. Uh, yeah. But he, he had 13 instead of 4, but generally the same kind of notion. I, I think what it is is a reflection of modern society. It's short-term, short-term pleasure. Uh, I want to eat something that tastes good. I want to get high. I want to fuck somebody. I want to play a video game. I want to watch TV. People have become more consumer-based and more materialistic, and that has changed our aspect of what happiness is. That, that has changed our idea of what is fulfilling. Back then, you know, you, you didn't have cinemas to go to. You didn't have a great steakhouse to go to. You didn't, you didn't have these instant moments of gratification that would warp your idea of what could make you truly happy. So they were more introspective and more self-reflecting on the idea of what would make a, genuine, or a genuinely happy person. At least that's my take on it. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree. And uh, I, I've just been like, like I, I never really got into philosophy until like the last couple of years. And like, I've been so lucky because I have professors at my at my university who aren't who aren't I don't know relevant relativists, I guess, or who aren't just like they hate the modern era like I do. Oh yeah, it, that's one of the risks you run with philosophy. I, I found that a lot of modern philosophy classes want to, you know, they'll have debates about, you know, what the definition of is, is, rather than talking about kind of grander ideas or what you'd see as kind of classical philosophy, where they were talking about issues like that, like happiness and fulfillment and, you know, what it means to be a person and what a person should aspire to. And that's kind of been swept away um, just for the sake of almost uh, sophistry or just the, the sake of arguing semantics or, you know, I... How do you order your your prepositions? You know, it just it seems like they've gotten way too technical with it, and they've forgotten kind of the core, the spirit of what philosophy is. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's more the the law of philosophy rather than the spirit of it, and that seems to be lacking. So, yeah, it's rare that you'll find a philosophy class that's <laughs> not going to hammer your ass with just shit that you wouldn't necessarily think you'd be engaging in when you take a philosophy class. Right. Exactly. I, I guess it's. it's... It's a good thing I'm in Alabama, I guess, so it's kind of working out now. Uh, I really don't have to run into so, to, so much just leftist-type propaganda, I guess, at my university anyway. Yeah, I, I couldn't imagine what uh, a modern philosophy class in, like, New York would be like. It, it would probably just be really fucking depressing. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> was there anything else you wanted to talk about aside from the the happiness thing? or what? Uh, I mean, that, that was about it. I just wanted to kind of, I don't know, talk to someone about that, so... Thanks. All right, yeah, have a good one. You too. All right, take it easy. Well, there you go. Classical philosophy, that's, uh, I, I, you know, at my university, when I went to university, I, I had a great philosophy teacher as well, somebody who focused on older stuff that didn't just stick with modern stuff and didn't stick with these basic arguments where you get just bogged down in technical minor details. Uh, he wanted to talk more about grander ideas or I guess uh, he wanted breadth instead of depth I, I, if you kind of understand what I'm talking about but um, yeah it would be depressing to try to go into philosophy now I, 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 I'm wagering that it would be very similar to sociology and that it's been taken over by other people that don't probably really care about philosophy but rather would use it to shoehorn in their more modern ideologies of social justice uh, you kind of see that, too, with what's going on where you have trigger warnings on syllabi and uh, the reading list uh, for a lot of college classes now wants to get rid of classical works because they deem them too white for whatever reason and want to bring in other shit. 
But if you strip all the way, if you strip all the classical stuff away, that's the bedrock. That's the the foundation. You should begin at the beginning. It gives you an idea of what it grew out of. It gives you an idea of where it started. It's it's integral. It's important. Um, yeah, God, that I, I would not want to be in a philosophy class in New York. That would be fucking depressing. All right, let's see what we've got here. Um. Pull in some more people. Hello. Hello. Uh, welcome to the Meadowcast. Uh, what would you like me to refer to you? Uh, Steve. All right. Steven. All right, Stephen. What would you like to talk about? Well, uh, first thing, I'd, I'd like to ask you two questions. The first one's really, really quick. I okay. remember at the beginning of this cast, you mentioned an anime, mm -hmm. like. Some galactic thing. I couldn't. I couldn't write it down fast enough. But I didn't want to go back. What was it called? Legend of the Galactic Heroes. It it what? spans about, God, I'd say a decade. Um, it's a hundred and twelve episodes. Uh, three or four different movies. Uh, you can find it on YouTube. There there are a couple of YouTube channels that have the entire thing subbed because oh, it, it it's older, so it's not something that's going to have a lot of copyright claims thrown at it. Okay, sweet. And then the other question is a lot longer. Uh, uh, today, go for it. <laughs> today I've been like, I always do that thing where I binge watch a lot of stuff. Like today I've been binge watching a lot of YouTubers like yourself who uh, do a lot of social commentary from a very, cons fair, I'd say very fairly right point of view. But I am, uh, I am very Christian uh, or religious, and I, b I believe there's a God and all this stuff with morality. But then uh, I just watch videos. Uh, today I watched a video about a person like you probably heard about the guy who is not only transgender but he believes he's a six-year-old girl oh Have yeah heard about that? Yep, yeah I've read the story on that one yep yeah so you would agree that that's kind of, that's a little something's not right there I, I would I would definitely say that that person has a uh, some mental instability issues uh, and that it's crazy people are humoring the idea that a grown man is a six-year-old girl that's just it's absolutely absurd yes so uh, what I am saying is I see a lot of YouTubers saying, well, they're transgender and that's okay. And, but then he says he's a six-year-old girl and that crosses the line. What line? There, if you are, are you far feeding into the liberalism that morality is relevant and feelings trump truth, what line? What line are we talking about? You have to set a line. I believe that line is the Bible, with the God. But even with people like yourself, I, I don't think you're you're not Christian, correct? I'm an atheist. Yep. So I'm I'm yep. not religious, but I'm not an atheist either. I'm just I, I I'm indifferent. I just don't give a shit about that particular subject. Yeah. So I just this is a question to pose to everyone. Liberals say there is no line, and that you can't say this man is wrong. But you say this man is wrong. Uh, and where do you believe the line is, and how, or how do you get that line? Uh, well, a, a couple of things. I guess I'll start with this. Um, uh, I, you know, I've described myself politically as a constitutionalist, and I have uh, right-leaning tendencies when it comes to economics. That, that's, that's kind of, at my core, what I am. But what that means, I guess, in just simple speak is, I, I'm more of a let, uh, live and let live kind of person. Now, there are caveats to that, and uh, I'll go into detail to kind of answer your question here. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't tell somebody who wants to go chop their balls off that they can't do it. Just like I wouldn't tell somebody that wants to get a tattoo or a piercing that they can't do it. It's your body, man. If you want to do it, go right ahead. But here's where I draw the line. Life is not a Disney movie. Okay, and no matter how much you want to believe you're a real little boy, no singing cricket is going to pop up and do a jazz number to convince the world that that's the case. Now, if you want to believe it, that's fine. If you want to modify your body and do all this crazy shit, that's fine. But I'm not going to humor your delusions. Okay, uh, that, that's where yeah. I draw the line. I'm for personal freedom. If you want to do crazy shit, go ahead. Now, if that crazy shit starts to set a national agenda, if, mm -hmm. if you're the one dictating how society goes forward, uh, you know, and trying to convince children that, hey, I, I lop my balls off, um, I'm a woman now, let's get little five-year-old boys to do the same and become little girls, then it becomes, yeah. a, it becomes a fucking issue to me. Because I don't think kids are at a place where they can make that kind of decision. <clears throat> you see this a lot uh, regarding the transgender issue. Well, they're mm -hmm. talking about all these kids that are transitioning. Explain something to me. How is it that we as a society can say, 
you can't have sex, you can't drive, you can't drink, you can't own guns, but we're but you know because you're not mature enough, you're not developed enough to make yeah. those kind of decisions. But you're totally um, developed enough to tell us that you're really a little girl or a little boy, and we should start giving you hormones and do radical surgeries. That's absurd to me. It is absurd. Um, and I, I think it's a very dangerous path to go down. Uh, you hear the, a lot of people talk about the slippery slope. You know, when people bring up logical fallacies, this, this is one thing that's always bothered me. They think that that's the end of the argument. It's not. When you bring up a logical fallacy, when you talk about stuff like slippery slope, it, it doesn't necessarily, one, mean that it's wrong, and two, it doesn't win you the argument. It's a weakness in your opponent's argument. So, okay, we've got the slippery slope, and they're like, oh, well, why are you afraid of transgenders? And they'll, they'll bring up the counterpoint of, well, what's next? Where, where do we go from here? If you look at society, we had a society that didn't like gay people, kept gay people down, didn't give them rights, didn't let them get married, and we opened the door to that. And now we're at stage two where it's, you know, transgenderism is now the new hot thing. Transgender rights, transgender this, new bathrooms for everybody. And people see the slippery slope kind of moving towards pedophilia. That's going to be the next oppressed group. So when we're having these conversations about transgenderism and talking about children getting radical surgery and going on hormone pills, if you're opening the door and saying that a child is mature enough to make a decision like that regarding their sexuality and gender, you'd better be prepared for the next group coming down the road, the pedophiles, because they're going to point at that and say, hey, you said that five-year-old is adult enough to make that decision. Why aren't they adult enough to have sex with me? Yep. It is... It is a slippery slope with all that, but yeah, you don't want to just point at that and say, it's because of that, and we should stop. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, so that that's kind of my view on it. I, I, I'm a fairly laid-back person. I really don't care who you are or what you are. You know, If I get along with you, I get along with you. But I'm yeah. not going to buy into fictitious bullshit just because you're likable or just because you want me to. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I did a, a stream with uh, two people that were trans. Right, we I had them on. We talked about a bunch of different issues. Well, they knew what my my stance on the issues were. They they kind of know where I fall. They still came on. We did the stream and everything. But even as well as I got along with them, it doesn't mean I'm going to change my opinion somehow because they they were nice or uh, yes. because it would be rude to disagree. Um, I I think that too is a problem with our modern society. Is you can't disagree anymore. You can't have arguments anymore because that's that's the worst thing in the world. Apparently, you want to yeah. coddle everybody's feelings. Part of the reason I did the trans stream was to show them that. You know, there are people on the other side that are willing to argue and not break down into fucking tears over it. You know, they both came on, they made their points, and that was that. You know, it was, didn't devolve into some SJW shit flinging contest. You know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah, I feel that a lot, especially since I'm a Christian. There's a lot of there's a lot of what people call fundamentalist Christians who always say gays are going to hell and they're the devil. It's like, well, I do believe that they are living a sinful life and that will lead them to hell. But you don't open the conversation with that. You don't tell them you're a horrible person because you can't talk about it then you're just you're basically demeaning them so you can't just talk you know what i mean no i i understand what you mean but as far as your i guess your your second question went um i i you know life isn't always black and white and it, no. it sometimes there are the finer details i try to make my opinion well known i've answered these kind of questions um for years now on ask fm or twitter and stuff I think people either just don't know that they're out there or they, they mistake my stance on it. I, I'm for personal freedom. I, again, if you want to do something, go ahead. But if it becomes a danger to society, it becomes an issue with me. And, you know, don't expect me just because you do something or believe something to respect that. I'm not going to believe or, res you know, uh, respect the same thing you do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to uh, talk about? Uh, not really. Just thank you for your time. And I'll just leave you all with... Uh... Vote for Carson? I don't know. <laughs> oh, shit. Totally different, but I like him. All right, well, if we need a sleeping pill, we'll, we'll call up Dr. Carson. <laughs> he is, but uh, I, like, I like him. The man is living Ambien. You know, <laughs> there should be a prescription to watching too much of him. You might overdose and fucking go into a coma. But uh, like all right, well, take it easy, Steve. Thank you, you too. All right. Okay. I love when somebody comes on to uh, to the to the streams, and they say I'm a Christian because the fucking chat lights up, and it's like fifty fifty. I also love how Christ cuck has now become a thing. All right, let's uh, let's see if we can get some more people going on here. All right, give me one second and we'll get somebody else on.
All right. Uh, not sure if this person's going to pick up. I'll give him. I'll give him five more seconds here. Then I'm going to move on. Okay. All right. Hello. Hey, what's up? Oh, uh, hey. Uh, you're on the stream. Uh, you want me yeah. just to call you Adam, or what do you want me to call you? Uh, well, thanks for putting my first name out there, but you can call me John. Okay, John. Well, I've doxed your ass. You're gonna have to go into <laughs> witness protection now. Everybody knows John is really Adam. They're coming oh, for shit. your. They're coming for your social security number next. Fuck, dude. I know. It's it's the end of the world. I I you gotta just cut ties right now and just go off the grid. <laughs> well, you know. Uh, so what did you what did you want to talk about today? Uh, you know, I think I'll uh, let's try to t uh, bring it in light here. I saw you had quite a few tweets about the Powerball. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, Powerball's at one point three billion right now, I think. Yeah, when I I saw the uh, article about that on CNBC that you mentioned, and I found it was uh, quite interesting because they said in the article that it was it was uh, it was two it was two nine two point two million tickets you'd need, and then it would actually link you to an article that they wrote in 2012 that said you needed 175 million tickets. Yeah, I was doing the uh, 2012 article, and I, I didn't notice until later on that it, that was at a 59 white ball count instead of 69. But I, yeah, I, I think at the same time, though, they decreased the number of uh, red power balls, too, though, from 36 to 26. So I'm not sure what the exact number is. Uh, I, I don't know how recent uh, the newer CNBC article is, but the, the odds are up there. It would cost a lot of money. But it, at $1.3 I think it's an $800 million payout. You take off 25% for the Fed, so $600 million. Probably another 10% for the state government. So you're looking at half a billion dollars cash lump sum. Yeah, it's not a bad deal <laughs> if you have the money to pay for uh, half a billion dollars of tickets. He, uh, well, yeah, I, it, it would be a, a very large sum. But let's say nobody wins the Powerball the next couple of times. You get up to one point. Six, one point nine billion. I, I have a feeling eventually the number is going to get so ridiculously high that I, I just it would be entertaining to me to see somebody try to do that and to see the backlash they would get uh, if you had like a Soros or somebody or somebody with just a, a ridiculous amount of money. I think he's got like twenty four billion. Go out and buy every possible combination just to win the just to win the jackpot and piss people off. Yeah, Donald Trump could do it. Yeah, anybody with that amount of money. I mean, anybody that's got a few billion is probably sitting pretty and able to, to pull that off. Yeah. I wonder what the, the chat would say if I... Uh... <laughs> let's just let's try it out. I'm a Jew. <laughs> well, chat, uh, John, uh, or as I like to call him, Adam, is a Jew. <laughs> and doxxed. No, yeah. Well, no wonder you wanted to talk about the Powerball. You Jews, yeah. right to the money. <laughs> Yeah. First you that came on the stream, instantly talking about money. <laughs> I, I think chat's going to feel justified now in the 400 fucking comments that are getting flung your way. Oh my god. Yeah, it's bad enough too because uh, my, favorite subject in, my favorite subject in school is math. <laughs> oh god, are you going to be an accountant? <laughs> well, you know, that's the thing. Like, uh, I tell people I like math, they say, oh, you're going to be an accountant, right? I uh, I don't like the idea of being an accountant because, you know, at the point where you're just living your life uh, using the same formulas and putting in, doing other people's uh, work, you're pretty much a computer. <laughs> so now, John, what's your last name? Chat's curious. Is it Shekelstein? <laughs> Goldenberg? What, 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 what would the last name be on that? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if that's a pretty safe thing to do, but you know it starts with an L. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, was there anything else you wanted to talk about here? Yeah, my main thing was I just wanted to talk about, uh, you know, what's the deal with the whole education system and uh, particularly my favorite subject, math. Like, it's so, uh, just the way people conduct it, it's ridiculous. I don't have much of a way to, I can't speak for the USA, but I'm a Canuck, so I know it's pretty bad over here. What do you think? Uh, I, know, I know in America there's been uh, a push for Common Core. And that's the idea that, at least in you know relation to math, that you don't need to learn multiplication tables, that you don't need to learn the basic functions and formulas, that you just have to have an idea of how to work to get there. It's not even getting the right answer anymore. It's the journey to the answer. You know, <laughs> yeah. some some weird kind of fucking new age crystal hippie shit. Um, I know in California, 
there was a movement to make math classes. Uh, and this was pushed by a teacher and backed by a lot of people to push math classes for K through six and even up into junior high, which would be seven to nine, um, to push them towards calculator use only, <sighs> meaning meaning that everything related to math would be taught via a calculator and how to make the answer appear on a calculator. You wouldn't learn how to do it in your head. You wouldn't learn long form writing on it. Just yeah, just right. calculator only. If that uh, was if that's what they do, then calculus will take like twelve minutes. <laughs> it, it, it's going to be crazy because I think what you're going to see, at least with this next generation, the one after the millennials, are all these kids raised in this kind of environment where they don't learn the basics of math, they don't understand it really, and mm -hmm. they don't know what the right answer is. But they have a you know a weird idea of how to do it their way to get there. But then they're going to get to college level where their weird new age shit isn't going to fly when they need to come up with a particular formula or, or the right answer. You know, how are you going to be an architect or an engineer if you feel your way to, to the, the wall not collapsing on your head? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's the big thing, right? Like, uh, you know, they're constantly, cut, they're constantly cutting all of these things out of the programs. Especially, I, I can't speak for America, but I know that in my local uh, place, they keep on cutting things out of all of our programs. And, like, it's... You can see it in real time. Like I talk to people in lower grades, and like each generation behind me is learn is being taught less and less in the class. Like, and I talk to the people in front of me, you know, and they were taught more things than we learned, right? Right. <laughs> like, yeah. It, it seems like a dumbing down, and it's, uh, especially in America, I think what we're seeing is almost an attack on STEM and anything related to hard answers. And a, a procedure to getting those answers is under attack because you can't inject your ideology or your take on it. You know, two plus two equals four. You can't spin that to talk about white privilege. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's this attack to dumb it down to the level where I, I, I don't know if kids are more susceptible to, to other things or what, but this whole feelings over facts routine that's getting injected into education, at least in America, is really, really fucking dangerous. And I, I know it's happening in math. I don't know what's happening in science, but I don't even want to look. Well, I, I, don't, I don't want to see what's happening in like chemistry or biology. That kind of scares me to think of what they might be doing there. Yeah. Well, th that's why I like to talk about. Well, I like to talk about math because it's my favorite subject. It's my best subject. But also, nothing really is a science until it become until math is in it. So, it's pretty good to you know solid math schools will take you pretty far. Well, but, yeah, it's all, everything really kind of can be broken down mathematically. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so you would think that would be the one subject people wouldn't tamper with, but it's exactly. the one that they're focusing on the most under Common Core. Exactly, and the reason is because, you know, math is hard, right? <laughs> it's really, like, it's, it's an interesting thing, because one thing that I've noticed and one thing that I think is really huge when it comes to math is independence. And, you know, it's like, uh, you know, I can teach you, how to solve a quadratic, right? Mm -hmm. But eventually, I'll show you. But if, but like you know, if next if I if you see a cubic equation, <laughs> you're not going to know how to solve that, right? But the way that they're making it, but the way that they used to do it is they would show you the cubic, they would ask you to solve it before you knew it, then they would ask you to solve it, give it your best try, and then if you couldn't do it. And th then they would show you the way, right? Now it's just here is the exact way to do it. Blah 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 blah. Like there's a lot less independence in math. There's a lot less pointing people towards problem solving, and you're get we're getting ridiculously high percentages of people with really really high math scores. That and they're a lot of them are just dumbasses. It's just because they, you know, they become this kind of machine. They t they take in the material and they put it out, right? Well, and that's a crazy thing, too. It's they're memorizing the answers to questions that are given to them. They're not memorizing, again, things like multiplication tables, like really basic shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. that, that would help them on the fly really quick in their head. So unless they're specifically asked that question, they're kind of screwed. I mean, it's almost like um, it, it's made <laughs> math has become kind of like video games. Like now if you play a video game and you get stuck before, you used to have to figure it out on your own. You know what I mean? But yeah. now you just go online. There are 400 walkthroughs and 800 LPs. Well, with math, shit, if I can't figure it out and I can't do my homework, I'm not going to get a bad score. I'm just going to go Google it. Wolf, yeah, Wolf from Alpha is going to do the problem for me, and then they're going to think I'm a fucking genius. I was just about to say that, right? Wolf from Alpha is actually it's kind of a bad thing when you think about the implications of it. 
Well, it, it's crazy that you'll see a lot of, like, if you ask people in high school and college, uh, which do you know? Which which kind of uh, program or site have you heard of? Have you heard of Purple Math or have you heard of Wolfram Alpha? They'll say, oh, Wolfram, I know Alpha, right, uh, WA. But the, the difference is, uh, something like Purple Math, it just lays out the basic, you know, uh, structure and the idea behind it, and it teaches you, but it doesn't give you the fucking answer. They yeah. want to go for the one that gives them the answer. Well, the answer's not actually... I don't know if this is just like a new, you know, like a millennial thing, but I, I do agree with the whole philosophy. There is a new philosophy that it's not the answer, more that it's the process. Like, a lot of the questions that we get assigned, we have full access to the answers. It's just what, sh what the teacher really wants to see is how we get it. Because you can't really fake that very well, especially when... Uh, like you can share it, you can share your process, but what they do in a lot of the higher math classes that I'm in is they give everybody a different a different test, right? Now, what would happen in one of your math, you know, these higher math classes if you were to go in there and they asked you for the answer and to show the process, and you just wrote down like fucking little smiley faces and used the words think jumping and wrote little grid boxes and none of the shit made sense. And when they they asked you what the hell you're doing, you said, "Oh, it's Common Core. This is this is how I was taught." What do you think the reaction would be? <laughs> They they would probably, you know, I probably wouldn't have much of an audience in those classrooms anymore, you know. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, there's a, it's pretty uh, free and open speech and math, but they won't deal with too much shit, you know. There's a cutoff point. Well, I, I almost liken it to chess. You know, if you want to play the game of chess, you at least have to know how the pieces move. That, that's kind of how math is. You need to know the processes, you need to know the formulas and the basic functions to be able to actually play the game. Exactly, and it feels like we've we've skipped that. So it's a bunch of kids playing chess, and they don't know how the fuck to move any of the pieces. Yeah, it, it's just yeah, it's depressing, at least from my my point of view. Yep, and uh, you know, uh, just like all kinds of people. I don't know if this is kind of like a personal problem. You know, I don't get the. Uh, I got pr I get pretty high marks in math. I don't get the Wait, wait, are you telling me there's a Jew that's good at math? What? <laughs> I don't get the highest marks, right? But uh, I find it pretty... It just, it really grinds my gears, right? That, like, there's other people in the class who get extremely high marks. Like, they get 100% on everything, right? Because they either fucking go to Wolfram Alpha or they text their friend for the answer, right? But then... As soon as they're hit with a question they've never seen before, they're literally, like, they're actually crying about it. <laughs> and it's like... Yeah, it, it's, it's absurd. Um, and, like, you know, like, I make a few mistakes along the way, but at least when I see something I've never seen before, I know how to tackle it. I, I'm not sure where it's going to go, but, uh, again, going back to the next generation kind of coming up, I think there's going to be problems down the, uh, down the road. I know a lot yeah. of politicians talk about wanting to reform the IRS, and get rid of all these steps and simplify it. They might have to because I don't know if these these children, uh, once they reach adulthood, are going to be able to do the basic math on even a simple fucking return. Um, yeah. it, it's going to be unpleasant trying to balance a budget when nobody knows how to fucking add or subtract. <laughs> yeah, I've seen, uh, especially in some, co I've seen photos of Common Core uh, slides from like presentations and stuff, and they're actually, from what I understand, in some cases they're actually trying to teach teach order of operations slightly differently, like uh, division becomes kind, div like the division symbol becomes, uh, like in a normal, the normal way is that if you see a division symbol, like you put everything in front of it over top of everything after it, right? But then uh, with common core, you are supposed to read, le you read the equation left to right. And with common core, you'll, with uh, common core, you'll get a 16, where the old way you'll get a one right, from the photo I saw, and like, uh, that could be a big problem in the future. <laughs> Common Core methodologies are just, it, it, it's almost counterintuitive. It, and the funny thing is, too, with a lot of that stuff, they accept any answer. They just, they just want you to do something. It's just fucking, they've turned math into doodling. It's an art class now. You write, think jumping down and little happy faces and draw draw forest and uh, a little cabin in there, and they don't give a shit. No, oh, that's great. That's a great answer to the division question. Here's a gold star. We're going to put you in the fast track class and get yeah. you to college early because you're a champ.
Yeah, I remember a couple of years ago, like, uh, you know, we had some, like, graphing quadratics questions, like, just fucking drawing it on pencil, on paper, right? And, uh, yeah, somebody, like, there was a group of people who decided to do every single graph in a different color, right? And those people all got extra 10 points <laughs> for using different colors. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely is crazy. Well, is there anything you want to uh, close this out with here before we uh, jump to another person? Uh, no, nothing really. I just, uh, I think if I had to go right now, I'd just say uh, Han Solo dies and Jesus was black. So, <laughs> All right. <laughs> Chat's going to love it. Take it yep. easy. All right. See you later. The amount of oy vey's that have shot past the screen from chat, uh, it's remarkable. You're going to you're going to break YouTube. You're going to buckle it if you if you shout out any more oy vey's in relation to our guest. Uh, let's see if we can get somebody else on here. I have a feeling this is going to be a good one. Let's see if we got another John Madden. Hello. Uh, hi there, Jim. Oh, uh, hey. Uh, how do you want me to refer to you? Keep me posted. Oh, uh, you can call me Yosef. Yosef. All right, Yosef. What would you yes. like to talk about? Well, I'd really like to talk about the family dynamic that was brought up a while ago. Okay. Now, I'm a really big Jeb Bush supporter. Like, I love Jeb Bush. <laughs> You're so full now, of shit, but all right, go on. What? <laughs> You're so full of shit, but go on. You calling me full of shit? I went to his garage rally. <laughs> so did you? Was it uh, during his yard <laughs> sale? Yeah. I, he literally, he walked outside he gave everyone a guacable for free. For did, free. Did it include his recipe? Was it an extra special Yeah, it did. The, yeah. The, he handed out the recipe like to everyone. It was on his card. He, you know, it, it was great. I went home. I made guac in his guacable. It was it was perfect. Now, I've heard you can use a guacable as a bathroom. I've seen quite a few pe people uh, taking pictures. After they eat the guac, they shit in it. Is that true? Is it multi uh, yeah. multifunctional? Multifunctional, you can use it. However you want. I actually have mine right beside me. You know, you know. There's my guac bowl. I can hear that quality. It's worth seventy five, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I, I just wanted to support him because he is such a great candidate, and like he's a tough guy. We need a tough guy. We do. Jeb is a tough guy. I've, I've heard people compliment him on his strength of, of leadership. He's gonna be the ultimate leader of America. Now, is that gonna be a? See, I don't know if we've ever had a zombie president, but after he hangs himself, how is he going to get into office? Well, that's going to be a little bit tricky. You see, after he hangs himself, I have to think this through. I, it's actually part of his platform. He's Well, the platform he's going to be standing on before he hangs himself, they've got the drop-down door. Now, I, I thought maybe Barbara Bush was going to use him like a puppet. You know, they're going to hollow out his back, and she's going to hold him by the <laughs> spine and be like, hi, I'm Jeb Bush, and this is my guac bowl presidency. But that's, that's maybe I'm daydreaming. Oh, well, actually, that is pretty accurate, I want to say. He's, how can I put this? Jeb Bush, he's not one of those old guys. He's hip, and he's new. He wears a hoodie. I have seen him in his urban wear. Uh, you yeah, know, he's no. going for that. He's going for that minority demographic, and I think he captured it with his uh, hoodie. Yeah, he's he's perfect. Now, did you see the picture of him eating Skittles and drinking Arizona iced tea? Where he's got uh, the you know the quote on his chest. It's like a, a sweater hoodie shirt that says "Fuck the police, vote for Jeb." Really? Yeah, I've yeah. never. I haven't seen that yet, but that definitely makes me want to vote for Jeff. I mean, Black Lives Matter. Black lives do matter, and Jeb knows that. That's why he's going for that vote. That's why he went down to a KFC and did that photo shoot there. It's, it's perfect. He's, I can just imagine. He's... Fuck. <laughs> going too fast for you here? Keep me posted? It's, fuck, I want to die. I, I genuinely want to commit suicide. There has never been a moment today that I have not wanted to just fucking put a gun in my mouth and pull the trigger. Well, now we know why you're voting for Jeb Bush. <laughs> all right, you know, that that's everything. That's We need a tough guy in office, and that's that's all I can say. All right, well, uh, keep me posted. J Joseph? Joseph? Uh, yes, Joseph, with a Y. Y Joseph with a Y. Uh, Yeb. Yeb is the candidate for everybody. I'm glad you got yep. your. I'm glad you got your uh, your guac bowl. Be sure to bring it down to the necromancy uh, ceremony when he gets elected, <laughs> so we can resurrect him. 
uh, to lead this country because, you know, Barbara's old. She can only keep that puppet up for so long before her frail little arm will fall over. And his dad sure shit isn't going to do anything. Yeah. You know, he's 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 like a fucking living zombie anyway. So it's the first oh, undead presidential family. It's going to be really good. It's going to be great. All right. All right. Uh, the last thing I had to say, uh, Adam, we're fucking coming for you. We know you're in Canada, you're a Jew, and your name is Adam. I am fucking on my way to your house, you motherfucker. I am gonna I'm gonna fucking slaughter your family. I'm gonna drown your dog. Okay? You're well, fucking stuck. Well, he's never gonna do your taxes now. See, you don't fuck with the Jew that no, does no, your taxes. No, 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 no. I I'm I I can actually get away with not doing my taxes. My my father, like the Goldstein family goes back all like we we kind of we immigrated from Israel. Oh, a while ago. Like, I want to say that was three generations ago. Was it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, the Goldstein family, we own multiple banks here. Oh, yeah, well, here do, in do, you, do you want to tell us a story about how your 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 poor, innocent grandmother died in uh, one of the camps at the tender age of four? Oh, she did. It was it was so tragic. And then they turned her into a lamp, right? I mean, that's really hard. Was, I mean, I, At least you can I, turn her on so her light shines on the Jeb bowl. So, I mean, that's a plus. <laughs> It you illuminates my, your I'm presidential camp. Right here. Yeah, yeah, I do. Here, I, can... I can. I can hear her suffering. Yeah, you can. He- if you say if they say if you listen really closely, you can just hear the chamber filling up with gas. Oh God, what kind of wattage does she take? I hear those Germans have good, uh, you know, engineering. Uh, what what strength light bulb can she go up to? You know, honestly, I have no idea. You need to learn your family history. That is disrespectful. I know. You're right. I, I really do. I. Fuck, I, I'm a bad goyim. You are, well, you wouldn't be a goyim. Oh, you, there I am, not a goyim. Right. Oh my god, fuck. yeah, but, you know, Yosef, you're fucking this up all over the place. You're killing I'm, me here. I'm sorry, I can't do this, yim. All right, <laughs> take it easy, Yosef. Okay, chat, we will, uh, we'll move on to the next. Adam, you might want to, you might want to go off the grid. Yosef is coming for you. Uh, I don't know why one Jew named Goldstein, of all things, would be hunting another Jew, but what can he do? It's America. These, these, <laughs> we're just all crazy. Every, every single one of us. Ringing up somebody now. Let's see what we get. Hey, what's up? Oh, uh, hey. Uh, so, what did you want to talk about, Martin? Um, yeah. Um, I just wanted to talk about the BLM Black Lives Matters and how it's. I'm from a very different uh interesting family um i'm biracial and but i look white or italian and half my family siblings are black and some are white and one of my my second oldest sister uh lola is basically a black racist against white people even though that her siblings are white and so is there parents. is there like a demarcation line across the family table at dinner where you guys are split um, yeah, up. Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, totally. Like, um, my parents are mostly right-wing Republican conservatives because my dad fled uh, communism from Slovenia, Yugoslavia in the um, early 50s. And my parents are Catholic and they thought, you know, if we're going to put, put our money where our mouth is and adopt children instead of aborting them, you know, so. Wait, so um, you're, yeah. you're, you're, okay, so. The biracial family, is it biracial through adoption or biracial through the parents? Yeah, biracial through adoption, yeah. My, okay. Both my parents are um, uh, American, Caucasians, and some of my siblings are um, native, some are black, some are mixed in black. I'm the youngest of seven. And I used to be a social justice warrior when I was like 10. I'm 28 now, and I've just done a lot more research. And it, me and my sister had a big fight over um, black on black or white on black violence. And she had a big poster on her Facebook page about Arab crime equals terrorism, Hispanic crime equals um, uh, illegal immigration, Black crime equals thugs. White crime equals self-defense. And all I wrote in her response was, uh, self-defense is not a crime, and she literally flipped her fucking switch. Now, Never, you, you, you like, are a braver man than I am, because she, she knows where uh, your ass sleeps. Yeah, I mean, no, it's it's cool. I mean, I mean, I, I hope the best for her or whatever, but it's just, it's, I, my... I've opened up to, if you look at the stats between black on black crimes and white on black crimes, they're, it's not even close. 
And it's the same leftist social justice progressive narrative of we're not going to look at the facts. You know, a thousand Muslim men rape, you know, a couple German women and assault over a hundred um, women in Cologne. You know, it's not, it's not, we can't really judge. We can't really say who it was. The TYT's video was absolutely disgusting. See, you know? I, have, I haven't like, watched it. What, what did they horrible. say? Um, basically, I forgot his name, but he's the guy with the dreadlocks and the, the tattoos. They basically were just, you know, um, throwing everything under the rug. Like, we can't really say what happened and like, who are we to judge? And you're just like, you're just like, it's, it's, they've, Germany and Europe has opened up the borders to the horde. Um, the Muslim, like I, I used to be in the army national guard. I was in military intelligence. So I did a couple of projects and presentations to my fellow soldiers on Islamic culture. And it was very dry and very academic in the presentation. But if you, the Muslim world has not gone through enlightenment. Um, there's no Aristotle. Uh, there was no, uh, Plato or Vort Voltaire. So it's really hard to explain to social justice warriors and progressive and leftists that live in a fucking rainbow bunny rabbit loving bubble and explain to them that these cultures, if a, if a daughter um, gets caught raped, they will be upset about that and they can kill her. They'll put her in a hole and throw rocks at her. And it's really, it's almost like living in um, the matrix almost like you, like my, my buddy Trevor explains it. Like you just see everything in slow motion and these leftists don't understand reality. Like Germans were surprised when they let a million Muslims in um, and 70% of them are young men coming from cultures where women aren't, aren't allowed outside the house and they consider um, non-Muslim women kufars. And it's like, like my well I, I i've seen the numbers with um i think it was a pew research where they were talking about uh, they'd done polling in all these different middle eastern countries and they they'd asked you know what kind of um i, I guess how do you view the muslim or islam what what do you feel should be for the world and it, god they had like 534 million believe, wanted sharia law 300 million it, like crazy fucking numbers Talking about, you know, well, death. I mean, death. I, I'm, not, I'm not so upset about the Sharia law because that can be really subjective. You know, if you're in Lebanon, Sharia law might mean, hey, let the Christians drink wine. Well, and no, no, they, they went um, they went further, though. I mean, it went beyond just right. uh, what are you open to? They went to specific ones like stoning homosexuals, stoning women that. Um, oh, yeah. Pew Research did a poll and in some countries it was like 50 percent. Do you believe that blowing up uh, civilians is justified? And they're like, yeah, yeah, blowing up a kid. That's totally, you know, that's totally legit. I mean, killing people for leaving the religion. And this is like the huge um, blind spot in the left that they're most the people that they're most tolerant of are the most illiberal, e progressive societies in the world and it's just it's just my you know a man can't spread his legs on a subway without getting berated but a muslim men going around and molesting and raping german women and the media in germany and europe is just like meh well I, I i think it kind of comes down to uh, my I, you know i was on stream with miley Yiannopoulos, uh, like four or five days ago and he he brought up a point i hadn't really thought of but he had said that for pc culture and sjw's it seems like muslims have become their new pet like, I've always seen uh, SJWs, especially, you know, the 20-year-old white suburban college, well-off, middle-class SJW, as treating other groups, minorities, blacks, doesn't really matter, um, as almost like pets. Like, they're arguing a point, and they're not really treating them as people, and they don't really communicate with them, and they don't really understand anything about them. They just want to go out and put a bunch of messages out and look good. And, you know, Yiannopoulos had said that it feels like, or it seems like, that they're transitioning away from... Uh, you know, blacks themselves, and moving now towards Muslims, where it's going to be everything is forgivable. We don't we don't talk about anything negative, and we don't really even interact with them. But we're just going to post this on our Facebook wall. We're going to talk about it and tweet about it, because they're the new group that we are going to shepherd because they need it. Um, and, and I I kind of see that happening. Well, leftist leftist morality has never been about. Um, Judeo Christian right and wrong, good and evil morality. Their morality is, according to TYT and um, other leftist YouTube channels, is the oppressed and the oppressor, the powerful and the weak. So if a Palestinian is upset and angsty about Jews living next door, he can go stab them 
and the Palestinian Muslim who kills Jews and votes for Hamas, who wants you know their their political ideology and platform in Article Five of the Hamas Charter is we are going to kill Jews, and the leftists at college campuses will be like, oh man, that that Palestinian is so oppressed, and it's 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 kind of an, an inversion of morality. You know, um, a black a black person can rob and destroy entire cities, whether it's North Minneapolis, um, which is close to my house, or Baltimore or Los Angeles. It's because they're oppressed. And I'm like that 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 I mean, one to put to to swing this full circle in Cologne, a BBC journalist on the BBC channel asked a Muslim activist translator who's handing out flyers and translating bus tickets and train tickets to the new immigrants, the refugees, and he said, well, I understand why these men would go out and do that because, you know, it's really hard to get welfare and a job in Germany. And I'm like, facepalm. And even the BBC uh, reporter asked, well, doesn't that not excuse these violent, these bad acts, these ba these criminal actions? He's like, oh yeah, that doesn't excuse it, but I totally understand. And you're just like, uh -huh. Face bomb. I, I don't know. It's just I, my, my dad says it perfectly 100 percent correct. Just because he was poor and was working in a mine at age 12 to um, help his starving family flee um, Eastern um, Eastern Europe doesn't mean that he gets to rob, rape or kill. You know, it's just it's just uh, right. Right. Standard should so, be a, a standard should be applied equally. Uh, you know, it doesn't. It, I agree with that. It, you shouldn't be able to shirk off responsibility for your actions because you can claim to be part of a group that has an issue, uh, whether that be you're being poor, or your minority group, or your uh, you know, whatever collective you might belong to, whatever you might identify as, does not excuse your individual behavior. We should all be held to right. the same standards. You know. Uh, yeah, but that, but that, but that is racist, sexist, homophobic. Um, all the letters of the alphabet of SJW, social justice stack. Well, see, that's you always know? what's annoyed me though about the especially SJWs. I, I it, it it flies in the face of meritocracy. It flies in the face of actual equality. If everybody's held to the same goddamn standard, if everybody's treated the same damn way. Uh, they what 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 is their issue with that? They want to excuse. But they don't poor... believe in that. They don't believe in equality. They they believe that um, men do not deserve protection and the rule of law because they've been oppressors. And even if that was true, which I'm saying it's not, at least in Western civilization, since probably the Middle Ages with chivalry, they've thrown that out. They've thrown equality for privileged and the oppressed. So if you're the, it, it's kind of like almost like Nazi Germanic. Aryan language in the 1920s and 30s. You know those Jews, you know, they got all the power and they're rich and they're educated and I'm just a poor Aryan worker in Frankfurt or Munich so I get to destroy their uh, places of businesses or um, beat them up. It's the same, it, it's, uh, if you replace the wording of a, uh, of a, a Nazi propaganda articles or pamphlets in the 1920s and 30s and change the word Jew to white, or Jew to male, and the word Aryan to black, or or uh, Aryan to Muslim, um, that will be the same. It, 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 I, I'm, I'm very tempted just to do that and change the words a little bit and be like, oh, that's Nazi logic. And, and my friend uh, Sean um, works at a pretty famous comic book shop in, oh, I shouldn't even, I'll, I'll, he works in a shop. Okay. And there's a guy <laughs> who is so justice warrior it's almost painful and he basically argued that um white men can't be discriminated against and shot my buddy sean was like um isn't that basically kind of like nazi what the nazis said and the guy like flipped a switch because they don't i don't know i don't think they read history or i don't know but hopefully ugh, ugh, it's so painful but yeah it is whatever and so br bringing back to your original point with black lives matters um what specifically about them did you want to bring up, or was it just kind of this general idea of oh, what's okay. going on? Um, I will. I, I think um, all all power um, resides in stories. Whether you could give an entire Pew Research Gallup poll CDC study, and they will still ignore you. I was working at a warehouse recently, and um, there was an older African American gentleman kind of in his early 60s, we got to talking, and he basically said he hated Black Lives Matter um, because they're actually, he's like, well, 6,000 black men kill each other and no one gives a damn. 
but if a bad black a bad cop acts improperly everyone goes crazy how about we fix the problems of the crips and bloods first and the 70 percent um you know out of born out of wedlock birth rate and then let's go to the racist firefighter or judge how about how about we deal with that it's it's almost like they have the horse bef- they have the cart before the horse and they're not black lives matters um wants more african-american police officers but i would argue i want more african-american fathers inside the home and more african-american teachers because but you know that's okay because all the teachers are white middle class women who've never you know <laughs> they're about um experienced of world culture and life as a North Korean and they're just living in this little bubble. I don't know what I would do is spend, I would literally pay black male teachers double, um, especially in high school, because hopefully if their argument, they care more about a black person in star Wars and they're like, Oh, isn't that great? There's a black person in star Wars. And I'm like, well, if you really cared about black role models, why wouldn't you be pushing for black African-American men, who have a master's degree in mathematics teaching young black men how to behave and be good in good society roles. Okay, so, I'm going to go listen. So you think they need to get their priorities in order. You think that they're not addressing core issues. I mean, we had somebody on earlier who was talking about uh, the family unit and communities. And, and so do you think part of the solution to this would be uh, a stronger black community, a more engaged one? That, oh, absolutely. That, 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 will, that will, I mean, you could argue 80% of the problems concerning young African Americans in society today are the broken black family, which has been destroyed by social welfare and feminism, which is, which has take, which has told black women, you don't need a black man. I mean, cause they're dumb and da 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 da, but the state will take care of you. And that's basically destroyed. I don't know, 200,000 years of human evolution. Um, taking away black uh, boys especially from their black fathers and replacing it with abortion and housing and um state social social programs um they've done studies on this and I, i can't cite them now because you know i'm dumb but if you look at over the majority of men in prison today they did not have a father in the home and the fact that people are still saying well, I'm a woman and I don't need, I need a man like a fish needs a bicycle. Well, boys need uh, fathers, but apparently, I don't know. It's just, that should be the main focus. But unfortunately, the left, DFL. Well, what um, what do you think they're going to yell at you more for when you bring up a point like that? Are they going to say that you're sexist and patriarchal for saying that a a boy needs a father? Or are are they going to say that you're racist because you're saying that black family structures lack what other races might have? Um, they'll probably raise the the racist card first because that 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 supersedes the woman um card. Look at the 2008 election of Barack Obama. Blacks were bigger, uh, higher on the oppressed scale than than women. So they didn't vote for Hillary Clinton. They voted for Barack Obama. Fucking hell. Well, what uh, so, what, do you, what do you want to close this out with here? Because I gotta, I, I'm trying to cycle through everybody. Oh, okay, We've been sure. going Sorry if I talked too much. Um, no, it's fine. No, it's fine. I, I just. I want to close this out that the, the that the people have to do their own research. Um, they have to find their own news facts now because if the German media and the German politicians, just like the left media here in the U.S. and the left politicians in the U.S., they will lie to you and they will try to cover things up. And it, it takes literally a thousand men um, raping and molesting and stealing and attacking for people to go, huh, maybe there's a problem. But, you know, we're all... My, my my last statement would be to when a German leftist says to a German concerned about immigration, saying, oh, you're a Nazi, you're a racist, say, no, you're bringing in Nazis and racist and sexist. That's your fault and not my fault. That's just what I'd like to say at that end. Okay. All right. Well, you have a good one. Uh, thanks for joining us. All right. Thanks. Take talk my call. to you later. Yep. <laughs> I find it amusing. Uh, we, so we've had a couple of black people, a Jew, a woman on, and chat just goes fucking ape shit every time. <laughs> every time. I, I am uh, okay, Jim. If you read this, a 16-year-old German kid just got raped in town hall by an immigrant in broad fucking daylight, and all the immigrant got was a restraining order. I have not. I've not heard of that yet. Uh, if somebody can link the story, or if one of the people that gets brought on knows about it, be sure to bring it up, because uh, that sounds fucking insane 
that would be beyond the pale. That would that would that's very hard to believe because that seems so absurd and out in the open that you would expect just huge pushback from from the general population that they uh, that they can do that. All right, let's bring some more people on. Okay, I'll give him a give him a few seconds here to try to pick up. Hello. Hello. Uh, how do you want? Uh, how, how, about that. No, that's okay. How do you want me to refer to you as Jack, or what do you what do you what, what do you want me to call you? Jack. You could even call me Suey if they go to swear, or you can just call me the Fur Fag. I'm okay with either of the names. Oh, okay. So we've got a Fur Fag on stream, Jack. <laughs> uh, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> Uh, just basically the the fact that I'm one thing I'm glad about is people like you, Sargon. I like to say more of the theory that we're seeing a new right push. Well, I don't know if I'd call Sargon right though. He seems he identifies as a cultural libertarian. I mean, it's a cultural libertarian, but it, it, an overall grander scale. If you said to me a year ago that the most popular candidates for the American presidency would be Ted Cruz and Donald Trump. I would think you're smoking crack. Well, that that's true. I mean, uh, Donald Trump before, uh, when he's talked about running for president or tried to run for president, didn't really get a lot of momentum. Uh, it, it, it seems like he's captured lightning in a bottle this time, uh, and there are a lot of people backing him because they seem to be tired of the way things are at the moment. Uh, Ted Cruz, I as well, uh, he's got he's got a bit of a groundswell happening right now. I don't know what his polling numbers are as of today. But I, I know he's he's gaining. Uh, Trump and Cruz both have pulled uh, ahead of the uh, back. Last I checked, uh, if, not trying to bother you. Last I checked, uh, he was in a good solid second place, I believe. I know sometimes he's somewhere in between, but he, for the most part, he's been in the second place. And actually, being from his home state, it's actually not as you know the big evil red state conservative place that you know kills gays because we're Texas, you know. Right. So um, okay. Well, well. Aside from the 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 uh, words of encouragement for the new right, what did you wanna what did you wanna talk about? Uh, just basically the just I basically want to talk about. Well, fuck. What's, what's it? basically just my anger with how social justice is basically has ruined our state, and and, the, and there I like to say the one of my anchors is how social justice warriors are trying, to, really, just how they fail at politics. And I'll give you a good... Okay, go ahead. Yeah, give me an example. Uh, I don't know if you know anything about the 2014 midterms, but in the state, a lot of social justice warriors, a lot of very left-leaning socialists were saying, oh my god, <laughs> I'm sorry, but just Chris Chan, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just reading your chat, that's why. But anyways, yes. There are all these people saying, Wendy Davis, finally, Texas is going to have a liberal woman. We're going to finally take this, and we're going to finally get those evil conservatives out of Texas office and make this a blue state. And what happens? The Republicans in the state of Texas win by a massive fucking landslide. Even the woman vote is a vast majority. So you think they overestimate their appeal, or you think they overestimate their political power? Uh, SJWs, uh, kind exactly. of the PC, PC crap? <laughs> yes, exactly. They they over exaggerate. They overestimate. They think that everyone is on their side when you're really seeing all these people come out of the woodwork saying no. Now, I'm pissed off. Now I have a question for you from chat. Gonk Rider or Raider wanted me to ask you. It sounds like you're talking. He says from a fursuit. Ask him that. Are you talking from a fursuit right now? No, I'm actually talking on my smartphone. So okay. you know. Okay. okay. I unfortunately, <laughs> had to get the MERS suit repaired. So forgive me on that. Uh, oh, you had it repaired. You get get a little damage at the the most recent convention, <laughs> did it? A little little tear uh, tear actually, in the ass. It was actually a drunk. It was actually it was actually a bar. It was actually a drunk guy in Austin. But long story, and not enough for the chat. Okay. All right. Well, uh, is there anything you want to close this out with before chat uh, completely loses its shit? <laughs> well, okay. I will say this. Please, for the love of God. Just don't vote for Bernie Sanders. Please don't. Okay. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> thank you for coming on. Thank you, Jim. And it was wonderful talking to you. Okay. Well, uh, the uh, 
the fur fag demographic does not like Bernie Sanders. Uh, and to answer Gonk Raider's uh, question, he is not talking from a fursuit. He was on his smartphone. So the more you know. Try pulling somebody else in here. Give him a few seconds and uh, move on to the next person. Again, if you're trying to to get on, I'll accept the request and then I'll bring you right on. So you just need to keep your Skype window open and see for it. Because again, it's going to be delayed. Everything you're hearing on stream is about a minute or two minutes behind. Hello, hello. Sorry, give me one second. I was eating lunch and had my phone ring. One uh, sec. Okay, not a problem. All right. Okay. Uh, how would you like me to refer to you as? Uh, undertow is fine. All right, Undertow. What would you like to talk about? Well, uh, gosh. Uh, whew, excuse me. I ran up the stairs to get up to my computer. That's fine. <laughs> T take your time. Uh, anyway, I was just going to say that uh, I feel like a lot of the current uh, political environment is... Uh, wow, well, that was... Sorry. Hmm. <laughs> I feel that a lot of the current political environment is the way it is because most people uh, don't want to don't want to try to make themselves any better. Uh, everyone just seems to be kind of a loser these days, and uh, everyone's afraid of losing something more. But um, I think the reason uh, that Trump is getting uh, so much traction is because there are people who have lost things and who have you know dropped out of the middle class or whatever, and. Uh, now they finally see an opportunity to start building back up. I think a lot of people feel really beaten down by this constant assault of horrible crap happening. And, you know, I mean, like, even in uh, the entertainment industry, movies are crap, games are crap, uh, books are crap. Everything just seems to be crap everywhere, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and, yeah. It, it feels like the American dream has lost a bit of its luster, whether yeah. it's the economy or entertainment or just basic morale. And right. they, they see Trump as somebody that um, can reinvigorate the country, and that's kind mm -hmm. of what the attraction is. Yeah, I actually just got tickets to a rally for him soon, so uh, I'm going to be hopefully worshipping at the throne of the future god-emperor of mankind. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I, I think that uh, a whole lot of the, tr the trend towards socialism is because people are uh, they're just sick and tired of uh, – well, not, not – let me back up a little bit. People um, – Ever since 2001, really, uh, that was sort of when the optimism of the post-Cold War uh, sort of tone uh, started to wane. Because, uh, you know, obviously 9-11 and everything like that. Um, and things have only gotten worse since then. We had the financial collapse of 2008, which sort of torpedoed the entire world uh, in terms of um, just how everything... Uh, how everyone feels. No one, no one really has much hope anymore. Um, and I think that the, as of the past year, with the past year being so freaking insane with how everything, uh, everything got crazy out there with uh, mass immigration, the refugee crisis, um, social justice warriors going completely off the deep end to the point where now even people in the mainstream have realized that, okay, something's wrong here and we need a change. So, um, yeah. Well, I, I, I would agree with that assessment. I think um, it, this goes back to what uh, one of the other, the previous people had brought up. It, it's the idea that, I, I guess it's almost like America, and I talked about this too, it's almost like America is disenfranchised with itself. We don't, it we don't feel a lot of pride in ourselves. We don't really think we can accomplish what we used to accomplish. And it almost seems like this current generation, you know, millennials, uh, it, it almost feels like they've bought that line, hook, line, and sinker. And social justice and the kind of this PC culture reinforces that message that we are, we're bad people. We have done bad things and our glory mm -hmm. days are behind us. And we need to look outward to kind of to, to stabilize ourselves or build up. And I see Trump as kind of a counterpoint to that. I see Trump as somebody who's saying, or at least giving people the impression that we can pull ourselves up by the bootstraps. We can make our country great again. We do have reasons to be proud of ourselves. It's not bleak. It's not over. It's not done. Yeah. Um, and so I would agree with that assessment. I, I, I yeah, see that a lot in Trump. That's supporters. exactly. Yeah, that's exactly why I'm supporting him is because I don't want to feel like a freaking loser anymore. You know, I want to be a winner. 
Right, right. <laughs> I, it, it's it's part of the American mentality, or it used to be, that we yeah. wanted to be the best at everything we did. We wanted to be the best in the world, uh, whether it was our economy, our production, our entertainment, um, our morality, uh, you know, our politics. We we wanted to be the best. We wanted to put our best foot forward. We wanted to lead the way as a shining example of what you could accomplish if you just put your damn mind to it and you worked hard enough for it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and that, that seems to be gone. At least it seems to be gone, especially over the last decade. Uh, and it's a bit depressing. Um, and so, yeah, I do see that a lot in Trump supporters. I see that uh, as being one of the reasons they, they like him so much. And you don't really see that in the voting base of the other candidates. I mean, people like Ted Cruz, but they like him for different reasons. They don't, they don't have that kind of backing or that kind of yeah. feeling for their support for him. Right. Uh, people like Rand Paul, but they like him because they see him as kind of like the anti um, the anti-government guy, the libertarian guy, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. And, and then people like Jeb Bush because they want good taste in guac. So, <laughs> exactly. You know, so well, Trump you know, is mean, kind of on I'm his so, own. I'm so sick of everyone saying that, oh, we, I, I'm going to vote for this. I, I like this guy, but I'm going to vote for this other guy because he's more electable. Like, what the hell is that? What, what happened to voting for somebody who you agree with, who makes you feel uplifted, who th you think is going to be a better president? I mean, what what is this? Everybody has to you know, tactically be like, oh, well, that person's not electable because he said X, Y, Z. I think... Um, uh, yeah, when, just... pe when people say they're not electable, what they're saying is, I want to elect bureaucracy. I don't want to elect leadership. Exactly. They're, they're not looking for somebody to lead them over the fucking hill. They're looking for somebody to do their taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah. and that not that's not necessarily what you want and, uh, uh, as somebody occupying the executive office. You don't want... A leader that's just there because he's the most bland, mundane, and appealing. You, mm -hmm. you want somebody that motivates the fucking country. And that, you know, people bitch about Ronald Reagan and his failed economic policies and Reaganomics and stuff. And there, there's justifications for that. But part of Reagan, or Ronald Reagan's fucking appeal was people felt safe with him. It was like grandpa coming on the fucking TV. They right. saw more than just bureaucracy with the Reagan. They saw leadership. They yeah, you want you want trust. somebody like that to be the head of a country because it's you know in, in in this world where the family unit is being dissolved so completely we don't it, it was like an analogy of the head of the household right so the the head of the household is the father traditionally and so the head of the country should be the grandfather in a metaphorical sense you know what I mean and that's very um, that resonates with people really well to see that kind of thing but also I think people are just so sick and tired of every everybody in the public sphere being so damn passive. I mean, nobody does anything. They just are this way. And uh, that's the whole liberal line, right? Oh, this is just the way you are. It's never about what you do. It's all, this is, oh, this is, this is, this is how you are. So you just say, oh, that's, you know. Well, that comes Whereas, down to part of the poison that's been fed to children over the last 20 years is that they are defined as a person by a mere characteristic of who they are. Exactly. They, they want to identify by their gender. They want to identify by their race. So it, it's this one piece of who they are, but they see that as the whole. And it really fucks with their ability to, to accomplish anything. They, mm -hmm. they become so one-dimensional, and they become so bogged down in their way of thinking. Uh, it, it, it's just it, it's depressing, to be honest yeah, with you. very um, much so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, God, I, I'm terrified. I'll be honest with you. I, like I've said before, uh, and I've probably said this many times. I like Trump. I find him enjoyable. I like his approach. Uh, I have issues, and that's why I'm not voting for him. Uh, hmm. However, the thought terrifies me that we'll have somebody like Hillary Clinton in office or Bernie Sanders in office because yeah. I don't think America can handle that. I don't, especially a Bernie Sanders with his economic policy. It'll, it'll policies. just collapse under its own weight, right? You can't. Yeah, Bernie Sanders. It's insane. You can't. You can't raise the minimum wage across the country to fucking $15 an hour, give everybody free college, give everybody free yeah. health care. Yeah. He, he, he's, uh, he's nothing more than a pinata. People whack with votes to get free shit. Mm -hmm. And he will, it, it will be, it will be a bad situation if Bernie Sanders becomes president. Bernie Sanders is like that one kid at high school who says, if I'm elected class president, I'll replace all the water fountains with fruit punch. It really, you know? honest to God, that's really what Bernie Sanders' platform that's all, is. That's all Bernie Sanders is. is all, like, you know, like, it was like all the people celebrating when Obama went, oh, I'm going to get my free house. And as far as Hillary Clinton goes, I don't even know what her fucking platform is. Does it, anyone? <laughs> that, that's the craziest thing. All the coverage of Hillary Clinton has related to her being a strong, independent woman, but I haven't heard one fucking lick about what her real platform is, what the planks in that platform are, what her policies are. 
it's always probably probably a lot like TPP if we knew and nobody would like it, right? Yeah, she might be the TPP candidate. You know, the one you yeah. have to wait till she gets into office before you find out how fucked you are. Exactly. All right. Well, was there anything you wanted to close us out with? Uh, hmm. Let me think for just a moment. Uh, hail victory. Have a nice day. All right. Take it easy. Good night. Okay, Chad. I, I saw somebody post the link. I'm guessing that was to the uh, German article. I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent certain. I'll try to find it again and. I'll read it if I get the chance here. I'm going to take a small break for one minute here, and I'm going to grab something to drink. I'll put on a little video, and then we'll get back in and do uh, another hour worth of uh, hours worth of calling, and then call it a day. And give me one second here. This is a tough business oh, to yeah. run for oh, president. I know. You're a tough guy, Jeb. I and, it's, and we need to have a leader that is pr- Real principled. Tough. I will take it to Hillary Clinton, and I will whoop her. You're never going to be president of the United States tough, by insulting Jeff, yeah. your way to well, the let's presidency. Let's see, I'm at 42 and you're at 3, so Doesn't so far matter. I'm doing better. Doesn't matter. Dr. Carson. Thank you, Wolf. Please join me for a moment of silence and remembrance of... Jeb Bush's campaign. <laughs> I love my dad. I'd kill for him. I'd go to prison for him because I love him so much. I'll give him a warm kiss. Uh... How do you do, fellow kids? What? I was in Washington, Iowa about three months ago talking about how bad Washington, D.C. is. It was to get the kind of the... Anyway, for goodness sake. (laughs) (laughs) A cup, sir. Okay. All right. I've got something to drink. We can continue on. So I see that, uh, Alex has repeatedly tried calling me back, so I will try to get a hold of you, and we'll see if you're still in a fucking wind tunnel. All right, let's see if Alex picks up. Hello. Hey, Jim. Okay. Is uh is my quality still shit? Uh, no, it's it's much better than it was before. Oh, okay, good. Um, so yeah, I just came on, I just wanted to talk about the idea of, uh, eugenics. Um, it it sort of relates to all, to this, uh, social justice, uh, bullshit thing. And, uh, you know, I think, I think where it's, uh, I think if we could isolate the actual genetics of this, you know, bullshit, um, we could probably fix it because I don't see a way of us fixing it to, in normal means. Um, no, when, when you're talking about genetics, or, or yeah. eugenics and genetic engineering, yeah. well, fix fix what bullshit? What are we talking about exactly? Well, well, to me, it seems, uh, it's not a mentality. It's more like, um, I think it's innate. Like, uh, same thing with religious belief. Some people are just really inclined to believe in God, or they're inclined to believe in things that are like, like government. Like, oh, I need my government welfare, I need my, uh, you know, I need my food stamps, you know, government this, government that, you know, you know, government daddy help me. And, um, or, you know, being self-righteous. I think you read a lot of things back to genetics. Like, if our society was different, uh, if our society was different, we could probably fix that. But it certainly is, you know, inclination. If you get what I'm saying. Well, I guess that comes back to uh, the question I asked: is what exactly do you want to eugenics out of somebody? What What are we talking about? Are we talking? What group are we talking about applying this to? Everybody? Um, what aspect would you want to have fixed or removed? Well, there's certain law of. Uh, I think we need to get rid of this. Uh, 
I think we need to get rid of this uh, groupthink mentality because you see that a lot of in social justice circles where they ban anyone or they censor people who they don't like. And uh, basically, you know, this whole groupthink, really. Um, but is, is there a corresponding gene to groupthink, though? I mean, well, see, well, see, I don't know that. I don't know that. So what I'm saying is that I think that should be researched. Another thing, I think we need to know exactly how many of these people exist in the world, or at least in the U.S. Like, how many social justice warriors are there? Are they 10% of the population, 2%? Are they 0.1% but just really loud? How many people go out of the face? Are they just going along with their friends thinking or what the parents are? So I think that would be the first step to basically solving the social justice warrior, culture Marxist uh, you know, infestation in society. We need to know how many of them there actually are. Well, I don't know necessarily, though, if you can ascribe uh, a political belief or a social ideology to a, a specific gene. I mean, I think it's it's a source material uh, that somebody can pick up and read, and whether they're swayed by that or not, there are multiple factors. Uh, when you're talking about going around identifying SJWs, <clears throat> are we talking about like putting a little gold star on them and putting them in camps? What, what are we talking about? Oh, no, nothing like that. I'm just saying, like, take a survey. And I'm not saying this should be forceful uh, necessarily, but I mean, I think we all agree that they are a big threat to Western society. I mean, we're already seeing that in Europe with them bringing in hordes of you know Muslims. Now, you know, of course, not Muslims are bad, and you have to you have to always say that to them. Not all Muslims, but yeah. Um, and we're seeing this too in STEM. Like you, you're introducing sexism and racism into physics and mathematics and you know, chemistry, and you know, you always talk about that the science wars back in the '90s. Uh, yep, the the science yeah. wars with uh, Sokol. Yeah, that's a a pretty yeah. good flashpoint for what was going on. In higher level academia, it kind of hit first because it derives from or it, it sources in colleges. You you have a lot of people that have infiltrated universities that propagate um, this ideology down towards college students that then spread it online. I think Sokol was a, a canary in a coal mine. I think he was warning people and drawing attention to something, and people weren't paying attention to it, because why would they? It's so, it's so obscure at the time. There wasn't an internet, really, like there is today, where you could just be like, oh, shit, look what's going on. And people missed the warning, and it spread even more. It had a whole 20 years to ingrain itself even deeper. Well, uh, I have a question. Do you know where all this is coming from? I mean, clearly it's coming from academia, but, you know, is there some you know, large conspiracy, some large group, you know, perpetrating, you know, this culture Marxist bullshit. A lot of people would tell you it's a Frankfurt school. Um, other people would say that it's uh, mainly derived or its source is coming from sociology departments. Um, I think, it, you know, I, I wanted to do a video on this because I, th I think there is uh, kind of a push behind it. And I, I think there is a specific group that has played a large part in it. Uh, but it's not something I want to go into right now. It's it's something I want to cover in kind of a more full-length video to talk about it. Um, the Frankfurt School sociologists, the, that all plays a part. I'm not denying that. But I, I, you could definitely source it to universities. Uh, that I don't think it can be objected to. I don't think people can really say that's not true. Uh, we, we see a lot of, especially millennials, we see a lot of young people that are basically influenced by this, and they're being influenced by it, and it's, you know, the most fervent of them are college age because they're coming from universities, and then it... Like I said, it spreads itself through social media like a fucking infection, like a virus. It goes through Tumblr, it goes through Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and all the other sites where they, they preach this crap to other people. And it's like a game of telephone where it gets echoed and distorted and becomes even more and more absurd. You know, you started with something like God, white privilege and you end up uh, with, you know, fat shaming. Uh, you, you start with something like rape culture, and then you end up at ableism, where they're talking about how just just crazy shit. They, they've gotten to the point where they're crazy. I mean, look at look at transgenderism. It's now become a game of telephone where we're talking about trans ethnic people, and that was a joke, by the way. Trans ethnicity was a joke. That was one of the trolls I was talking about on Tumblr, where people were going around saying I'm a trans nigger is a joke. But now what do you see? You see people in the NAACP and you see people in Black Lives Matters that are actually using that as a legitimate thing. They're saying, I'm trans-ethnic. I think I'm black, so I really am black. It's it's ludicrous. But um, yeah, I'm getting off topic here. But yeah, uh, the source is definitely university level, and that's where it spreads. And the people at university level influence what is going to be the teaching material at lower levels because they're the ones that people go to as the authority on what should be taught and how a subject should be structured.
Oh yeah, I completely agree. And you know, the other funny thing is they're they're the, they're the biggest hypocrites. You know, they talk about rape culture, but it's only rape culture when a white man does it. It's not rape culture when a Muslim does it, when a black man does it, or because the, yeah well yeah because their their yeah. objection isn't rape culture their objection is white culture that's when you get to the end of it that's really what this is there are a lot of sjw's that go after anything they perceive as being caucasian or white and they use the justification of their bullshit ideology to accomplish that when you show them something like what happened in germany and cologne with all these sexual assaults they don't care because they're not interested in rape culture as they define it, which that would be a, a clear-cut example of the shit they talk about all the time. They don't care because they're not white people. They're, they're interested in going after whites. And they, they fancy it up with the language they want to use and the justifications they want to use. But that, that the Cologne rapes are the best example of that. It's the best example of their facade slipping away, of the mask peeling off just a little bit. So you can see what all these SJWs and these feminists that argue online all the time about are really about. They don't. They don't give two shits about rape culture. They don't like white culture. That's what it is. Yeah, I completely agree. And speaking of Cologne, Germany, and the whole European situation, you know, I think in the coming years we're actually going to see, uh, you know, a lot of backlash against these, you know, immigration policies. I mean, we might even see a civil war in, you know, a decade or two, maybe even earlier than that. Uh, so I mean, yeah, it's going to be pretty bullied over there. Okay. Well, um, Alex, what did you want to close this out with here? I'm gonna. I'm. I'm running short on time, so I'm gonna cut everybody down to about ten minutes here. Um, I just want to say I'm an atheist, so you know, like chat go crazy, call me uh, fedora tipping. Oh no, they were know, they were beard. they were calling you fedora tipping the moment you started talking. Oh. So I, you've just confirmed what they thought. <laughs> uh, well, okay. All right, Alex. Well, you take it easy. Mm -hmm. You too. All right. Bye. Okay, chat. Let's try to pull somebody else in. Just give me a second here. All right. I'll try this. Why is this not? Give them a few seconds here and then try somebody else. Hello. Hello, could you hear me? Oh yeah, you're coming in clear. Uh, what, right. did, what did you want to talk about? You're on stream, Pat, so whatever you'd like to talk about. Um, I was thinking, I really wanted to talk about at first, um, like Bernie Sand Sanders a little bit. Then I wanted to kind of rotate over to the Syrian crisis, if we could. Sure, go go on ahead. All right. So like I now I'm an avid Bernie Sanders supporter, obviously. I mean, he has free college, free welfare, we're going to have all this stuff. It's going to be great. I just don't get why it's a big deal. Why is it such a problem, Jim? So you're voting for free shit 2016. Of course. Oh, why wouldn't I? Well, I just yeah. want I just want free shit. I want all the shekels coming to me. Well, I want everything. What did you think of his uh, running mate gives me that? Well, what, <laughs> sorry, what did you say? Oh, what did you think of his running mate, Bernie Sanders running mate, uh, gives me that? Cuz he's free shit 2016. So obviously his running mate is gives me that. I <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Excuse me. Was he? Did he happen to be African American? Um, God, I, you know, I have people on here all the time that use racist language like that. Please, this is 2016. It's person well, of color now. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I didn't. I didn't mean to do. Check. I check. didn't mean to. If I, oh, I'm sorry if I offended anyone. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is Pat short for patriarchy? Okay, cisgendered pig. Um, yes, check, just check the is. privilege before we move on. It is now. Like, I don't, because the minimum, uh, back on Bernie Sanders, the minimum wage is going to be $15 an hour, and then he's going to, he's going to bring in all the Syrians. Like, it, why doesn't it make sense? I just don't get it. He's just, like, he's just going to pull, like, $100 billion out of his ass to pay for all these programs, and then we're all going to have free shit. I don't see why it's such a big deal. Like, I don't see why people hate him. Well, it's a perfect political platform, Rob Peter to pay Paul. You know, who, who cares about all the people that paid into Social Security? Yeah. Let's just, you know, throw them into the gutter. Old people are stupid. Yeah, and, and we'll, we'll pay the 20-year-olds $15 an hour because flipping a burger is worth $15 an hour. Fuck, fuck the uh, nursing assistant that went to three years of college yeah, to get you, that pay rate. No, the kid flipping worked, the burger. You worked hard your whole life to go through college, 
and you earned it. You earned going through college, building up a business, and now you're doing well. You're making good money. You're making millions for your children. You even give some away to charity because you feel it's, you know, it's feel like it's the right thing to do. And then you just get shit on by a 90% like tax. And then all of your employees get raised up to $15 an hour. But it makes perfect sense. It's totally fair. Well, you, you know, are- uh, the reason I like Sanders so much is he's going to get those bastards, the, uh, the uh, Koch brothers. Because I hear they murder people. I've been told that they're murdering people around the country, those billionaire bastards. Oh, I, I saw a study on that. I, ca- I can't actually, I don't have the citation, but I saw the study, man. I, I saw it's the study true. too, but I can't remember any of the numbers because I was so fucking high off my medical marijuana that I only use for medical reasons to remember any of those specific numbers. Oh, man. It, wait, it's just, it's a hypothetical situation though, right? You don't actually... No, don't it's, have... it's hypothetical ma- medical yeah, marijuana, it's, yes. It's hypothetical, right? Absolutely. Hypothetical all the way. All right. All right. So I know you only want to give 10 minutes to everyone. I don't want to take up anyone else's time. So we'll move over to the Syrian refugee crisis. Okay. Hit me and, with, then, and then hit. we could try to wrap it up. That way you can get more people. Because, you know, obviously this is just a fucking shit show. And I don't want to... <laughs> I don't want to be taking up people's time who actually want to come on here and talk about shit. Listen, so, you know, we, we, yeah, we need to keep you uh, on time and on schedule because I have more fur fags to come on, okay? Uh, yeah. Obviously more important. So what do you want to talk about? So, like, I, I'm i for bringing, bringing all the Syrians over here, honestly. Like, I'm totally for it. But I think we have to do something to, like, educate because, obviously, they, they don't really appreciate Western values, now, would you agree with that? Because uh, you're seeing all these things that happening in Germany, where all around the camps you're seeing the rape crisis is happening. From and they don't want to say it's it's Muslims doing it, but it, you know, it's it's the Muslims. We all know it's the Muslims doing uh, it. I would say that the people that are coming in from the Middle East and from North Africa don't appreciate uh, Western values or Western culture. Yes, I'd agree with that. Yes. So this is what we have to do. It, like I I hope to one day run for like political office and then I could like enact this okay so I'm thinking what we do is we send them on like a camping trip (laughs) like a camping trip almost okay and then like they'll go to the camp they'll learn about western values so and then they'll they'll learn basic education too if they if they don't know if they haven't been educated so let's say um like mathematics so then they could do math and they could they could so it's a re re-edu- it's a re education. Oh, 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 let me finish. Okay, they let me. I'll let you finish. At these camps. Yes, obviously it's a concentration camp for re education. Yeah, they, they no, they're concentrating while at the camp. Now, Pat, um, when like, you when you wrote that joke for South Park, did you hold on to it thinking that's a fucking gem I got to pull out again? That was. I I wrote that. I made that joke up myself, Jim. Honestly, they honest, honest to God, one hundred percent, they ripped that off from you. Stole it from me. Okay. Now, obviously, like, I, I tried to get it out there. I tried to say it was all my joke, honestly. I didn't, I didn't steal from anybody, me. But they, they chewed me over. They fucking stole my joke. They shit on my face. And then they just, they fucked me, basically. I, I got cucked, okay? I was the one who got cucked. Are, are you Swedish? Maybe that explains it. I don't know. No, I'm, I'm just, um, I'm just a fuckboy on the internet, Jim. Just a fuckboy? One of, one of the many fuckboys that didn't have it the internet. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Uh, okay. Well, well. Aside from the concentration camp, anything else? Any uh, any other gems you want to close this out with? I mean, there's a stand-up routine Carlin did back in the '70s. Maybe you want to maybe want to dig deep. I'm I'm good, Jim. I'll I'll let you get get on. With <laughs> I, I'm sorry for wasting your time. I just couldn't resist. I, I'm pretty bored. It's a it's a Sunday afternoon, you know. So. Well, you're not wasting my time. That's the whole point of the show is people calling in. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Okay. Uh, all right, you take it easy. See you, man. Okay, let's uh, let's try another here. Hello. Hello. Hey, uh, you're on the stream. Oh, I am. Yeah. Oh. Uh, what did you uh, uh? What did you want to talk about, Joshua? Oh. Uh, oh, hello. Um. Hello. Um. Hello, Jim. Hello. Uh, so I usually go by Guitar Boy four four four. Um. Okay. So. Are, are you you're fucking with me? What was the name? Guitar Boy four four four. Guitar Boy four four four. Well, you can call me Wolf Tiger Fox Lover eighty eight forty four. 
Sure, sure thing. Sure thing. Wolf, tiger, fox lover. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, this is yeah, this is a uh, great. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, okay. So, the reason why I want to come up is because, um, okay. Uh, so I don't know uh, how much into music uh, you're into, but uh, but uh, I I get involved, but occasionally I would get myself involved into a uh, di into what is called this do it yourself uh, or DIY music where people would have house shows and pretty much all the people who attend them are a lot of the, are very much these pro very progressive leaning uh, very 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 leftist and um, it's and it's just and I've always been very I'm like centrist libertarian uh, very individualist anarchist and I mean, oh, you, 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 Joshua, you're killing me here. Guitar Boy four four four, and you're an anarchist. Are you an atheist as well? You are a fucking atheist, aren't you? <laughs> How can you tell? Oh, just, just dreaming here. Do you own a fursuit? Can we go for the fucking uh, quadruple? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not a furry. Don't worry, don't worry. I hate. Don't worry. I'm not a furry. <laughs> okay, so Guitar Boy four four four, the anarchist slash atheist. We're talking about do I or DIY, DIY do it yourself music, and you're saying that there's a an issue going on with what exactly? Well, I well here's the thing about this about the entire scene is that I think that a lot of that a lot of it's based in punk, and I know know that there's a lot of leftist ideal a lot of leftist ideology involved within the scene. And I think it's pr pretty ev pretty evident. I know that there are some people who deviate from this, but a lot of the people there sh uh, share very similar beliefs. And uh, and I mean, I'm not the most outspoken about my views, but uh, a bunch, but occasion, but recently, a bunch of people from uh, occasion, uh, a bunch of people from the community found a post I made on Mew about me just shitting on the DIY community. Oh my god, you browse Mew, don't you? Yeah, look, look at my fucking profile picture. Okay. I, I hope to god, I, I hope to god somebody from Mew sees this fucking stream. Guitar Boy 444 the name alone is great. Athe thank, atheist, thank very much. atheist Anarchist, and you browse Mew. We'll, we'll have to talk about uh, fucking Flack later. Um, oh, oh, oh yes, oh yes. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> uh, I I don't own too much on fl Flack. I mean, I have a few uh, albums on Flack, but nothing, nothing too much. But uh, but yeah. So but they was, they saw the post that you put up on Mew. You're saying? Yeah. What was and, the What uh, was the post? So, uh, okay, so someone on Mew was talking about what's your DIY DIY scene like, and I just said, uh, here, let me bring it up. Let me bring up the quote because it's fantastic. By the way. Uh, this, okay, I, I, this is what I said word for word because, okay, let's, okay, I, I'm just wondering if like someone from the, from the DIY community just sees this and just bans me from this. Oh, oh, uh, hold on. Okay, take your time. Chat's loving it. Okay, okay, here it is. Here's the stream. Okay, the DIY scene in Orange County is terrible. Uh, mostly high schoolers with only a handful of people over 1825. Most of the people there are insufferable, middle-class libtards who keep cucking Bernie Sanders. I'm not Pole, by the way. I'm actually not. Uh, I've only met about three to four people there who are actually tolerable. Uh, the girls are cute, but they're all taken, and most of them are third-way feminists. Most of the bands there are math rock, midwestern emo, shoegaze, and post-rock, and attending enough of house shows almost makes me hate all of those genres. I mean... Yeah, I mean, it, there's such a. Not sure if you're familiar with any of that, but just I'll I'll link you to a few bands and see what you think. Uh, not to mention that everyone ironically likes pop punk. I think it's a California thing. I don't like pop punk, but that's just me. Uh, there's one in Riverside County, which is more tolerable. They occasionally host noise shows, so fuck yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I'm one, I'm one of those patrician types on you, so judge me all the fuck you want. Uh, they still had that retarded ethos, but it's not as evident. Oh, okay. I think we're losing chat here a little bit. So you post this on Mew. How do they know it's you? How do, how do they connect it to you? 
Okay, what if, what of my friend? What of my friends? Wait, uh, uh, let me uh, ask this uh, first. Are you a trip fag? No, I'm not a trip fag. I oh, hate okay. trip fags. Okay, all right, go on. Uh, okay, so a very close friend was browsing you, and he said, um, "You know, this sounds a lot like Guitar Boy 444." And then he went that to this guy, to this guy who was uh, hosting the house show at the time, and uh, he said, and he just decided to post it all over the page. Uh, some of the people there thought it was fucking hilarious, and there's this one guy who was really butt hurt by it, and he was just saying. I was just like, really wish I could find out who this person is, so I'm gonna keep them far away from me, from my seat, me and my seed, my local house scene, like he fucking owns the place, which kind of destroys the entire e DIY ethic altogether. But hip hop, yeah, there's a lot of hypocrisy in it. Just saying. And then there's this one girl who said, "Four uh, Chan is a hug box for white supremacist heteropatriarchy. If they hate it, that's a good sign." I think. I don't know if she's uh, joking or not, but we're knowing. Uh, how the scene is like, I'm pretty sure she isn't. So one of your friends finds a post, and they spread it around, and then people find out it's connected to you. Yeah. Okay, and so what What was the, uh, to bring it back on point here, because Chad is losing its shit, what was, uh, so the reaction you got from the scene that you're a part of was a lot of pushback because you dare post something that doesn't agree with them? Well, the thing is, is that only two people know that it was me, so there are people like, I bet it was this guy, I bet it was that guy. And so I'm just in this position where, like, I would say absolutely nothing about this. Because the the guy who organizes the show knows how much I hate the entire community. And he's totally fine with it. He's one of the three to four uh, tolerable people I've met there. There's some other cool people there, too. But mostly because we share music tastes and not so much politics. Okay, well, I, I, th this would be my suggestion. Change your online persona's name to GuitarBoy443. And they will never <laughs> find you. They will look for the other guy... <laughs> that's the Mew browsing anarchist atheist who was Guitar Boy 444, and you will be off the grid. Um, and I, I also listen to Murr's Bout, too. So. Oh, my God. You are the perfect. You are the. You are Mew to a T, my friend. When I, I, when I talk about I the Mew board, this is what I'm talking about. I just want chat to take it in. I want them to soak it in. Who they're arguing about music with. <laughs> All right. Well, I wish you best of luck. Don't take shit from them. Post whatever the fuck you want. You're going to Thanks. find people in life that are going to disagree with you. The thing that's going to get you through that is just stand your ground, don't give in, say what you want to say, and live your life the way you want to live it, and you'll be much, much happier. Uh, de definitely. All right, definitely. take it easy. Oh, chat, you enjoyed that, didn't you? Yeah, I can, I can tell. I'm, I'm looking at your reaction. Um, now... <laughs> That was a chat between Guitar Boy 444 and myself, Wolf Tiger Fox Lover 8844, talking about music from the Mew Board. That's the Mew Board, uh, by the way, if you're wondering. That was the Mew Board. That's what every poster on the Mew Board is like. Okay, ringing somebody else up here. Hello? Give me one second. I'm sorry, I just want to pause the stream. Yep, not a problem. Sorry. All right. Hey, Jim, how's it going? Uh, it's going good. Uh, what did you want to talk about, Ted? You're on. Uh, you're on the stream. I'm. I, I want to. Before I say anything else, I just want to say how delightfully flabbergasted I am by the um, the caliber of the callers that you've had today. I I hope that I can continue in this tradition. Well, yeah. You know, uh, we've had some real fucking gems. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, the last caller in particular, Mewboard. Just a shout out to you guys. That's. Uh, that's pretty much fucking what I expected. So, well, so, so due to the delay, you, I was like in in the midst of a hearty belly laugh right when I right when Skype started ringing because, you know, for anybody who hasn't called in yet or is a little slow in the uptake, there's like clearly what like a two or three minute delay here. Yeah, it's like a, a minute and a half, two minutes somewhere in there. Yeah. Right, and so <laughs> I'm listening to this fucking oddest. <laughs> tell this barely comprehensible story about uh like i guess i uh, going to somebody else's house to play guitar and then complaining about them online or it was very trippy um, uh and, yeah it's, it's very rare that you will be identified by an anonymous post i i like the fact that in that story he said his friend when he saw this post was like i bet that's guitar boy 444 which makes me wonder how recognizable his posting style is on mew I, I'm gonna have to go browse the fucking board and see if I can, uh, you know, find him out. If I can, if I can snake him out of there. 
I also, Jim, I want to, if I can, I want to give a shout out to the guy who really made my day because you had a caller who, when they started talking, you know, because when you hear somebody's voice, you sort of make a mental picture of them in your mind. Like I have an image of, you know, what Jim looks like, you know, maybe uh, before I saw him, you know, in a, in a live stream, I had a picture in my mind of what Sargon looked like or whatever. So you get this caller and, you know, I picture like maybe like a dweeby little guy with like, you know, like somewhat autistic, couldn't get laid to save his life. And I'm thinking, oh, what is this guy going to talk about? Well, he wants to talk about genetic engineering to create the master race. <laughs> yeah, the eugenics one was, uh, I didn't expect that conversation. Well, you know, we should put him in camps and do some genetic sequencing so we can uh, throw him on a fucking pyre and just take care of the issue. Talk about a lack of self-awareness. I wanted to like reach through the computer screen and be like, how many children will you have? That's genetic engineering. That's how the master race gets made. <laughs> it, it has been one hell of a show. It's been, uh, I've gotten people from uh, all over the political spectrum, from uh, all over the world, apparently, and uh, quite a quite a few interesting people. So I know I've got 10 minutes, and uh, I, I want to use them more productively than just to shit on other callers. So can I, can we talk for a second about you? I want to talk about your outlook, which I think... <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna stick my neck out here. I don't want to insult you, but I think you kind of cultivate a sort of cynicism. That's maybe, um, maybe it's an internet persona thing, but it seems almost self-defeatingly jaded. Um, you, you're just talking about my outlook in general on things, or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think. Here's my here's my outlook uh, to answer kind of your question to give you an idea. It's not an inter internet persona. I am what you are hearing before you. Uh, the views I present are really what I believe. Um, I think it's a hopeless situation with a lot of things that are going on. And I've always been the type that likes to watch shit burn. And, uh, you know, it's it's really, to put it, I, I guess, the best way I can, it's somebody commenting on the end of the world kind of thing. That's that's how I see it. I just, it, maybe it is just jaded cynicism, but, I, you know, I look at the reality of the situation and the way things are, and it feels utterly hopeless. And I don't feel like it can really be reversed. I feel like everything is a devil's gambit or uh, just it, it's a tit for tat. Uh, you know, even if you get somebody like Trump in, he's going to strengthen the power of the NSA. It, you know, if you get somebody like Bernie in, fuck it, uh, the economy's gone. Um, so I, it, is the, can I jump on that NSA thing? Because I've I've been curious for a while. You know, you say that um, I heard you say in a different Metacast that you're not going to vote because none of the candidates are good enough for you. And mm -hmm. I've also heard you mention that you have reservations about Trump. Is that the big reservation? Is the NSA thing? Yeah, my, my biggest reservation uh, when it comes to Trump, uh, the, the thing that bothers me the most are his statements about internet and his statements about national security. I don't want, you know, I was pissed off enough. Well, you know, Obama got this, this groundswell of support when he came in, and you remember all the shit he promised. Oh, I'm going to get rid of Guantanamo, we're going to get rid of the uh, Patriarch, we're going to deal with all this shit. Obama's coming to town and he's going to fix everything. Didn't fucking do a thing. And that was a guy that had insane amounts of support and a, you know, a Congress behind him, and he still didn't get shit done. Um, and he was promising to do it. And now we've got candidates that aren't even promising to do it. They're the, it just, I don't like where America is headed. I don't like the mentality that we need to have a security state above us. I don't like the idea that I need my phone conversations monitored, I need my internet activity monitored, I need my mail looked at, I need to put on 14 different lists. Um, it, it just, it, it, it scares the shit out of me. I'll be honest with you. Um, and my biggest reservation when it comes to Trump is that he's not anti that. If he was anti that, I would vote for him. So here, I want to, I want to give you two, two counter arguments in brief. The first is, the first is just an argument, you know, from, from perspective, which is to say that it's a really, really rare scenario where you have, you know, Satan versus an, an angel, right? As your as your options, right? I mean, I think my personally, my favorite president was was Ronald Reagan, and I think of 1980 or 1984, and just how fucking obvious that decision would be to everybody, and how if if I were alive back then, how good I would have felt about going and voting, you know, voting not just against Mondale or Carter, but for this sort of this figure who's sort of heroic to me as a, as a political figure. I don't, that's never been the case in my lifetime. 
I've never had an election like that, except for maybe voting for Ron Paul in the primaries, but I knew he was going to lose, right? So the first, so the first argument I want to make is just an argument from, pers from, from perspective and prioritization. Yeah, sure, he's not perfect. But are you really, Jim, are you really going to say to us, going into a voting booth and making a best of the worst decision, doing some best of, wor of the worst decision making, a process that will probably take you on election day 40 minutes max isn't worth it to you to try to make things not as bad as they could possibly be? That's one. And I know it's a it's a rhetorical question, but don't jump well, on it right well, away. I well, wait, wait, wait. I, I, sure. I do have a response to it. Um, I, I think of it like this. Imagine you owned a home, right? And it was near a place that had levees, like New Orleans or something like that. Mm -hmm. And the levees are going to break. And you are told ahead of time, the levees are going to break. What are you going to do? Now, you've got uh, a couple of choices on how you can handle it. Now, you could, right, you're talking about good versus evil, the best of possible examples. The way I look at it is we're fucked. Whether it's going to happen in four years or 14, uh, the end result will be the same. So as the guy standing there, as the waters are going to come rushing at me, I can be like, well, you know, fuck. Uh, maybe it's going to be something where I do it by hand and I build up the barrier wall and it's going to be hard work and it'll make the water stop. Or maybe I can get a fucking bulldozer and get a, a shit ton of fucking dirt built up, right? But either way, both are going to eventually fail. It's not going to save my ass. I, I just delay it a little bit. It, you know, that's that's how it feels. Yeah, like, but, Okay, but, but Jim, I can, I can work with this analogy. I think this is a great analogy. For, for one thing, Thank you. I think it's a really brilliant analogy. But two, I, I can work with this. So if, if I'm in that situation, of course, what I'm going to start doing is building a boat. I'm going to build a big-ass boat in my backyard uh, as expeditiously as I can so that when the levees – and I'm going to start moving my furniture and everything onto the boat. So that way when the levees break, most of my stuff is okay and I have a sort of an alternate home. But if in the meantime, if in the meantime taking – 40 minutes out of my boat building means the means um, impacting a decision as to whether or not somebody who will ostensibly represent me will start sticking wads of chewing gum in the cracks in the levees, as, as imbecilic and as futile as that would be, or will take a pickaxe to them. I'm going to go and vote for the guy with the chewing gum instead of the person who's going to try to fucking demolish them. Right. So, yeah, I agree with you. I, I kind of I, I'm, I'm not a, as maybe as much of a doomsday prophet as you, but I, I do feel like we're in pretty fucking dire straits. But <laughs> well, well even e even Don't to even that, self, what it is, is it's self-defeating cynicism to say, OK, because I know that uh, the end is nigh, I refuse to play ball. I'm not even going to participate. Because well, no, I, I look at it like this. Okay, to jump analogies, we're going to be all over the fucking place, but whatever. Um, I would be the guy on death row that gets strapped to the table, and instead of trying to delay it by talking for five minutes, I'd look at the executioner and say, just fucking pull the switch. Because I know what the end result is going to be. I, I'm going to fucking fry. So whether it's five minutes from then or immediately, I'd rather just get it over. The flames are coming, my friend. <laughs> yeah, but... You, but uh... Also, I think this is this also shows a lack of perspective because the world has been in. <laughs> this is, I, I guess, I would put it this way: a progressive is somebody whose um, outlook on life is uh, excruciatingly infantile because they think that things always get worse, or rather that they always get better. That life is progress. That humanity inevitably marches towards better and better sort of social consciousness and understanding and enlightenment. And that's not true. I mean, if you look at history, that's just that's just bogus. But th I think the opposite end of the spectrum is somebody who thinks that we live in unprecedentedly horrible times. And I think if you I think if you take a historical view, you'll also see that things have been pretty horrible at other times in our past. There, there, you know, you can. Uh, well, what what historical view do the Romans take? Oh, they don't exist anymore. You know, well, there no, there is do. a point. There is no. no there is do, a point. Do, the Roman Empire. No, 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 no. The Roman Empire is the Roman Empire still exist? It's gone. The Empire doesn't. But are you telling me that there's no one alive today who could trace their lineage back to citizens? I'm not saying Rome? we're all going to die. What I'm saying is Rome fell. You know, I'm sure yes, there were people there that said, "Well, shit. Do you want to take 40 minutes out of your time to tell the barbarians to go fuck themselves?" Well. <laughs> Do you, you, you see what I'm saying? What, I guess what I'm saying is there were pe there when Rome fell, there were people who were slaughtered in the streets by vandals and Visigoths, and there were people who made preparations and 
were able to, not just people, there were entire s states that made preparations and weathered the storm. And you don't have to be Chichiro getting your hands nailed to the door. I'm not, I'm not telling you to be that. I'm saying, I'm saying that there are those of us out here who are trying to, are trying to prepare and or counteract what's going on. And rather than just, you know, thumbing your nose at us for being imperfect, I, I really think you, I think you would be happier for one thing. And for another thing, I think you'd be making a positive difference if you said, okay, there is, there is a, um, a scale here and, you know, maybe Trump isn't perfect, but he's no Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders. And I, one more, I want to say one more thing. Yeah, go ahead. We'll extend it. I'll give you more time. Go ahead. I appreciate it. When you, you, um, you recorded a message around the end of the whole Gamergate thing. It wasn't really the end of Gamergate, but it was the end of sort of your involvement of it. And I think you were, you had some sort of prescient views on it that it was sort of dissolving in its focus. And, uh, yeah, back uh, that would be November of last year. I know what you're talking about. Right, and you said a couple of things. One is you you had a very interesting quote about the strong people of the East, which I, uh, which I was. Uh, fascinated to look up. You're obviously somebody who knows history. But the other is you said, look, you guys didn't understand. It was a really, really simple set of instructions. Three words, attack, attack, attack. Right. And that really stuck with me. And this was before Trump came to prominence. You know, I, I want to say at least once a week, Trump will come up in the uh, in the news media cycle in a way that reminds me of that quote. And I'll think, this guy understands. Attack, attack, attack. Way before you started doing the Meadowcast, way before you even really sort of reemerged as somebody who was looking at, at mainstream politics and not just, you know, making fun of uh, hippie losers on some college campus somewhere, I was associating Trump's approach, Trump's sort of flip the table over approach to, to this process with that quote and thinking, geez, you know, this is like Trump is like the uh, the gym candidate in a way. So that's I think there's for me, I know that this was an association that I made on my own. Right. Independent of any further input from you. But I really feel like I don't you're not going to get <laughs> you're not going to get a better avatar of or we we are not going to get a better avatar um, of our interests. We're not going to get a better representative of normalcy and sanity versus the hordes of lunacy on the sort of SJW side of, of, of this sort of intracultural war that's going on. Uh, I don't think than Donald Trump. Certainly we haven't, again, in my lifetime, we have not. So, you know, my perspective is limited. I'm in my twenties, but I just, I can't understand how you can let the perfect be the enemy of the good to the extent that you seem to be willing to. Okay, well, I, I let me address a few things. Um, with regards to attack, 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 it, it's not, it wouldn't be strange that you would see similarities. Trump's father is quoted as telling him that, that exact quote, attack, attack, attack. Trump's talked about it on uh, news media. I, he told his son, if you want to be successful, this is what you have to do. Um, Trump listened, obviously, that's why he's getting the kind of groundswell he has. You don't want to be on the defensive. You don't want to play by your opponent's rules. You want to be on the offensive. It's like chess. You can't win at chess if you play defensive. You will not win the game. Um, and, and so I, I, I can understand why you'd see similarities with that. And you're right. Trump does encapsulate a lot of the things that I think a politician should do. I don't think he should buckle down to the system. I don't think he should play the game. I like his flippant attitude. I like that he's aggressive. I like that he counters a lot of what his opponents you know, want or think by just basically telling them to fuck themselves. That's charming. That's 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 something I haven't seen in a long, long time or read about in a long, long time. And maybe you're right. Maybe maybe he is the perfect avatar. But I, I, again, Wait, so no, I didn't say perfect. I said as good as we can expect. Uh, well, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, but I just it, it's hard for me to budge on that issue. I've watched over the last, God, it would be, thirteen or fourteen years now. 14 years. I've watched after or the last 14 years of the government amass such insane powers and such absolute control that to have somebody who would not just not be opposed to it, but to also utilize it or ask for more of it, it it's hard for me to budge on that. 
what what is the threshold when does it end you've got tpp you've got cisa you've got the patriot act uh, the De defense authorization acts of 2011 2012 and 2013 and they've been given fucking insane powers we're, we're living in a surveillance state and it, uh, it amuses me to no end uh, as part of the jaded cynicist that i am that people seem to be completely fine with that that they're they're fine with the rights being stripped away. They're fine living under the thumb of government agencies that don't have oversight on them. That think they have the right to invade everybody's privacy. We live in a country where software companies basically have bent over for the government and introduced back doors and flaws in their fucking software and hardware to allow even more spying. I want a candidate that addresses that. I need the candidate to address that. That's one of the big fucking issues for me. I do, um, you know, and don't, I don't want you to mistake, this isn't like I'm going out and advocating to people, don't vote. And I'm not going out and advocating to people, don't vote for Trump. I'm just saying, that's my issue with him. What, right. Well, my honest opinion, I, like I told Milo Yiannopoulos and Sargon uh, four or five days ago, Trump is probably going to win. I, I, I honest to God see him getting the Republican nomination, and I see him destroying whoever he goes up against. I don't think anybody can beat Donald Trump. I think he's played uh, a brilliant game. I think he set up his rhetoric and uh, his talking points to the point where if anything bad happens in the next year, he will have a fucking groundswell of support. He's basically said, this is the problem. So if anything related to that particular problem, you know, Syrian immigrants, uh, Muslims, Mexicans, if anything comes up related to that shit, he's golden. He will not be opposed. It, all it's going to take is ISIS or somebody doing something fucking monumentally stupid, hurting kids, uh, po poisoning a water supply, uh, fucking up a national monument. And they're dumb enough to do it. And if they do that, he's guaranteed to win. Hey, Hillary, what, what is she going to do? She's already got people on Twitter and different social media sites talking about how uh, she basically aided and abetted uh, her husband in raping women. You know, people are coming out saying Hillary Clinton helped Bill Clinton rape women. What, how the fuck is she going to shake that off? And Bernie Sanders, he's going to forget to take his Alzheimer's medicine one day at a fucking rally, and he's going to wander off into traffic. So I don't really think he's going to survive till November. Yeah, it's a, it's a shame about Bernie because I actually think he could have captured the nomination. He could have been Obama 2.0, and he, he dropped the ball. The moment, the moment I knew that he wasn't going to make it was the moment that he surrendered his podium to those fucking skanks in Oregon. That well, was... Yeah, what, what, what does that show as far as leadership goes? I mean, when you're, when you're looking at a Bernie Sanders, the man couldn't defend his own podium at his own event with security, uh, you know, and he'd put money into this. How the fuck is he going to defend the country? It, what is is uh, Syria going to come up to him? Is the is the Islamic State going to say, well, Bernie, I think you need to check your privilege. Is he going to bow his fucking head and let him go talk at the White House? It, it's ridiculous. Bernie Sanders is a weak candidate. He, he doesn't project power or leadership. And his, his political platform, <clears throat> his political platform, his planks are ridiculous. People are only voting for him because they want free shit. If you look at the demographic of the people supporting him, I, I, I don't even have the numbers in front of me, but you know what I'm going to guarantee? I'm going to guarantee you that the majority of the people that are interested in Bernie Sanders for president are between the ages of 18 and 30. That's going to be his majority because they want free shit. Right, and, and people like that are, are dependably poor uh, turnout when when it actually comes election day because they're they're hung over or stoned or they just forget what day of the week it is well they're gonna yeah. they're gonna be countered by the people that are supporting the other candidate you know if donald trump goes to run you're gonna see a lot of people that haven't voted in a while vote you're gonna see a lot of older voters vote you're gonna see young right-wing people vote and it's well, there's, oh go ahead to be to to be clear i don't think there's a chance that the, i think there's a, a a ghost of a chance at this point that it's it ends up being Bernie versus Trump. I would actually prefer to see Bernie versus Trump. That would be more interesting and enjoyable for me as a as a viewer, as a consumer of sort of political uh, pageantry. But I think that that Bernie's dropped the ball. I think it's going to be Hillary versus Trump. I, I think you're probably right. I don't think Bernie will take it, but I think Hillary will be absolutely destroyed. I really do. I think she's got way too many skeletons in her closet regarding sexual. Uh, uh, <laughs> sexual liaisons <clears throat> in relation to her husband and land deals back in their home state. And I think that that shit's going to just come, and not even to mention the emails. I mean, I fucking mean, Hil Christ. Hillary's closet is like a skeleton emporium. But I mean, if you, but you can't just to say, you can't just assume, I, I guess, let me, let me just leave it with this. And then I, if I could make a, a couple more comments before I get off. Um, but as far as this issue goes, 
don't just assume Hillary's dead in the water because she's such, such an uh, awful harpy and termagant. You, you've actually got to go out and vote. Even if you don't want to vote for Trump in the primaries, I just, I don't know. I, I feel like it's a, it's again, it would take you like 40 minutes. One of the candidates wants to fucking shove uh, chewing gum in the levee which isn't going to ultimately do anything. But the other one wants to take a jackhammer to it, which is going to make your work a lot harder in the future. Right, but I mean, touching back on the Reagan thing, um, th- this would be like telling... I feel like you were having this conversation and you're the guy telling me, you need to vote for Reagan because, oh my God, what happens if Mondale wins? <laughs> what I'm telling you is, Mondale doesn't have a fucking chance. I really see Trump as almost guaranteed the victory. I Trump would have to do something so contrary to his character, or there would have to be... It would have to be a standing graveyard instead of a closet to outdo Hillary. Yeah, and I think the mistake you're making there is um, who was it who said was it one of the one of the Bailey brothers or something who said nobody ever went broke betting against oh no it was H L Mencken who said nobody ever went broke betting against the good taste of the American public. Don't uh, you know? Don't place a bet on the uh, on the wisdom and wherewithal of your neighbors of your voting neighbors in this in this respect. No, I, I think the majority of the country is fucking retarded, I'll be honest with you. Listen, I, I, again, at the end of the day, this comes down to my personality. I, I got my start on the internet uh, laughing at fucking absurd things. I'm just kind of at the point where uh, it's not just the internet anymore that strikes me as absurd. I, I see everything at this point as fucking absurd. And it, yeah, I guess that is cynicism or realism, I don't know. But um, it, it's all going to come crashing down, man. I, I just want to see the fireworks before I die. Jim, can I say two quick things before I get off? Yeah, go ahead. The first is, uh, dude, if you are on streams with like Milo Yiannopoulos and stuff, you've got to post that stuff because I'm I'm sub to you and I never saw I never saw that. Oh, that, yeah, I was talking about um, the rapes in Cologne uh, like two days ago or whatever the fuck it was on Twitter, and uh, Yiannopoulos had asked me to join some stream. Uh, it was hosted on Sargon's channel, but I I, I don't know. I, you know, okay, it was I'll, it was kind I'll, of spur of the moment. I'll look for it, but dude, post a link to this stuff because not all of us are. Uh... Are tapped into every, you know. I I want to. If, if if Jim's on a on a on a cast, you know, I'm one of your uh, I'm one of your your fans out here in the hinterland. So I want to get a I want to get a link or whatever. That's why I subscribe. The other thing is, um, would it be all right if I plug a? Uh, I edit an online magazine. I'm looking for writers. Maybe uh, anybody listening to the cast right now might be interested. Would that be okay? Yeah, that's fine, man. Go ahead. So the uh, the URL is uh, commentmagazine.net. And um, it's not uh, it's not a commercial thing. I don't make any money off of it. There's a few other writers on the site. They don't make money off of it either. It's just a thing that we're doing to try to get you know some different ideas out there. We're looking for uh, good writers, not uh, you know. <laughs> well, I don't want to I don't want to make any preemptory. Uh, well, wait a minute. Qualifiers. Guitar Boy four 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 writes amazing <laughs> fan fiction. Are you sure you don't want I that was... on set? I was so thrilled because when he was like, yeah, I want to read you, I want to read it to you, and it's really hilarious. And I was thinking, like, wait, is he really just going to go and find something that he wrote and then read it verbatim? And that's (laughs) what he did, yeah. I was so thrilled that that was actually what it was. I know, it's remarkable, isn't it? So, um, commentmagazine.net if anybody wants to check it out and Jim thank you so much for uh, for letting me come on I've this is as uh, as uh, somebody somebody earlier said that this was a, a shit show and I can't disagree but I also want to say this is probably the most entertaining metacast so far oh I'm glad you liked it um, it was good talking to you uh, I'll consider what you said but it's just the it's a cynic in me that I just it's hard for me to to yield on that issue but I'll, I'll give it some thought all right fair enough thanks a lot man all right have a good one Okay, Chad. <laughs> Everybody's screaming shill. Well, he asked. I, I could have told him no. So, you know, he asked. I, I feel that's fair. The whole point of the uh, the viewer call and whatever the hell you want to call it, Metocast, is just to let people that watch come on and say whatever the fuck they want to say. So he wanted to talk about his website, and it's totally fine by me. All right, I'll take a, a few more people on, uh, and we'll start wrapping it up here in a little bit. But uh, I'll grab some more people. All right. Give him a couple seconds here to pick up. Okay, Chad. Hello. <laughs> oh, hey there. Uh, if you want to just turn down the stream in the background, we should be good. Oh, yeah, totally. And then uh, you're, you're on the stream, Max, so whatever you want to talk about. Uh, Yeah, my town is full of SJWs. That oh, sounds like a fucking nightmare. Oh, yeah, totally. 
I am every day trying not to kill myself. <laughs> that sounds uh, that sounds pleasant. What about your town exactly makes it so attractive to SJWs? Uh, how do I put this exactly? Clearly, you've never been to Long Island to New York. Uh, nope, I've never been to New York. Yeah, that explains it. Uh, God, how do I describe this? Uh, there are emos everywhere. I'm constantly getting told to check my privilege, that I suck for being white, shit like that. Oh, it sounds, uh, absolutely pleasant. Uh, tell me about it. Like, everywhere I look, someone's got, like, this dyed hair shit, some sort of weird glasses. Like, it's pissing me off every day. I'm, like, freaking shaking just thinking about it. Are you, are you literally triggered right now? Can oh, you not no, even? Oh, nah. <laughs> you know? The amount of people I trigger on an everyday basis, you know. Well, what what <sighs> specifically about your town did you want to talk about, or what what aspect of having so many <clears throat> having so many SJWs uh, gets to you the most? I'd say the amount of uh, being told. Okay, probably this wasn't the best time to talk. Hold on a second. What the hell's up with the strain? Oh God! Uh, you're 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 crashing and burning here, Max. Yeah, long day. Uh, I, I I'll try you again then, because uh, it's yeah, getting totally. towards the end of the, to the end of the stream. If I got a little more time, I'll call you back. All right, cool. Okay. All right, let's uh, I'll try another one. Oh, I didn't expect you on the stream. Oh, uh, well, welcome, Simon. What would you like to talk about? Oh, uh, uh, well, I, I did mention before, I'd like to talk about the uh, sort of state of Britain, which uh, may interest you to some extent. So yeah, I've got to mute everything in the uh, in this corner. There we go. Uh, so uh, I'm going to disappoint everyone in the chat by saying I am actually a member of the British Labour Party. Oh, they're going to love so that. Oh, they're going to love it. They're going to uh, love that. <laughs> so you've probably heard that, obviously, we've got a trot as our leader. A tr trot is trotskist. Well, not, maybe not quite, but Jeremy Corbyn, you've probably heard a bit about him? A little bit, a tiny bit. So why don't you inform me and the uh, chat of who that is and what they stand for? Well, this is probably one of the biggest upsets in Britain ever. So uh, we obviously, uh, and nobody really expected this to happen, but the Conservative Party won a majority in, in May, obviously. And the left's been dis in disarray regardless. But uh, so, you know, we look going for the next leader and we went through all the people sort of from the Blair years or, you know, the postman. And it's all this whole list of sort of uninspiring, dreary politicians who give uh, very conciliatory, um, pff, annoying answers to all the questions. So people turn to who they felt was most authentic. So uh, as much as you'll have, you know, um, Trump in the States, I think the, the British left went sort of a the same direction with Corbyn. Now, Corbyn's nothing like Trump in the extent he's actually just a very sort of kindly, uh, you know, old man uh, who, who happens to believe what he believes. But what's kind of happened is, is that the left's turned into complete and utter civil war. Uh, anyway, so uh, that's the sort of the state of things over here. Uh, and it's it's gone absolutely insane. The uh, lunatics have taken over the asylum to some extent. Now, so, when, you, when you say that, are you referring to kind of this left civil war between themselves or what, what exactly? Well, the factions, I mean, what so, there's Labour specifically. Shut up, close the door. Okay, right, sorry, I'm going to have to be really, really quiet. This is getting quite annoying. Um, so, uh, basically, you'll have progress and momentum, which momentum is the new left group taking over Labour, who now sort of run the show, but they haven't got the political capital to remove the old Blairites. So someone like Hillary Benn, uh, as you know, was the shadow foreign secretary was able to stand in parliament. He was given a free vote over Syria and basically say yes, we should bomb Syria and stuff like that. Now that was partially what. So <laughs> I might actually have to end this right now. I, oh, okay. no, 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 no. So no, sorry, I've got a, a brother who uh, probably doesn't want to hear what I have to say. Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll just quite quiet it down a little bit. Anyway, so what basically what I wanted to sort of bring into this was how this relates to America is that I think part of the Trump effect and what's happening in Britain as well is the search for authenticity. But as soon as Trump, uh, as soon as Corbyn's had to sort of govern, uh, he's had to, uh, he's become a joke in, a, in essence because he's been a rebel all his life. And so now, did, did things, he it's been, did he compromise on the the things that he said that got him elected? I mean, once he, so he um, what did no. he do exactly? Well, well, the specific thing I'm talking about is uh, of Syria, which is sorry, sorry, I'm rambling very, very nonsensically. 
but um, over Syria, he's ha he was he gave his party a free vote when he wanted to be able to whip them into a vote on voting against airstrikes in Syria. And instead, he had to give his party a free vote because essentially he has the support of the party as a whole, but not his uh, members in parliament. Who all wants? Who are all at his throat? And quite rightly, because he's completely unelectable. Oh, okay, and just just for the chat here, because you got a lot of Americans listening. Uh, when you say uh, well, gave his party a free vote, would you explain that to him? A uh, free vote it means that uh, it's instead members of the party. So you'll have a whip in America. So you know, say Frank Underwood in, in uh, House of Cards, he has the in charge of making sure votes go a certain way. So you'll have a, a two line whip, three line whip, something like that. So if an, uh, if a member of parliament has to vote a certain way. They're told by the leadership, this is important, you have to give a three-line vote, do this. A free vote literally means it's something on conscience, so often something like abortion or something like that will be a free vote. And uh, he gave, he didn't have the political capital to actually whip his party into going with the new party line. So it exploded in his face. Yeah, in essence. Um, but the way I really want to talk about it is that obviously this is sort of coming into the whole SJW thing. And uh, I, I said I'm a, I'm a Labour cuck, but I'm definitely not on the, the SJW end of things. Now, and, why are you a Labour Party person? Because from my understanding, didn't the Labour Party fuck Britain over with their immigration policies? That is um, that is something very interesting to talk about. Like, I'm not pro-immigration, but the last Labour leader, Ed Miliband, had, you know, his, his sort of... Uh, the giant stone headstone, and one of those things was to reduce immigration. Uh, I don't, I don't but, know if you saw but that. But was, wasn't that after the damage had been oh, done? Oh, this is, this is long after. Right. Uh, what I would say is is that we had high immigration, uh, and for, for, for a long time people didn't really see the negative effects of it in a lot of senses. Okay, right. I've I've really really got to go. Unfortunately, uh, I'll just. Uh... Well, good luck catching your train. And it was a pleasant oh, oh. conversation. I really. I, if I could quickly just uh, say, yeah. Um, what I'd say regarding what happened with Labour. Um, so uh, yeah, we we did mess up massive long immigration. It was Rotherham made messed up entirely. I, I was very tempted to leave the party over over, over Rotherham specifically, because if what role does the left have if in any situation other than to support vulnerable working class girls in care? Okay. All right. Well, you you have a good one, Simon. And, so, uh, okay. Th thank you very much. Sorry for not being uh, too sensical. Uh, I was uh, hoping uh, to move on to um. Actually, if I do have quickly have time, uh, Goldsmiths. Did you see, see that whole thing at Goldsmiths University with Mariam Navazi? Um, no, I don't think I'm familiar. Uh, so, you know the Baha Mustafa, that girl who... Um, oh, no, I know, yeah, okay, that's what So we're this about. is the same university as that. So what happened is the atheists at, um, the atheists at Goldsmiths invited Marion Marzi, who is a Iranian uh, human rights activist, but she's also an atheist. And so there's this great footage, if you can find it online, of um, the, uh, basically these Muslims went into this talk it was she, she was invited by the atheists and uh, her being berated by about four or five uh, angry Muslim men at the front. And bear in mind, this is a feminist woman, you know, giving a sp speak, basically saying, you know, how the negative effects of Islam in Iran and other countries and how Bangladeshi bloggers get their heads chopped off and stuff like that. And they just these, these Muslim lads are laughing at the front. And this turned into a whole shit show if you watch the entire footage. Or the oh, no, event. wait, I, I have seen that. That's the one where uh, it's like a smaller white room. And she's getting yeah, a that's speech. The one, the... Yeah. yeah, okay, now I know what you're talking about. Well, uh, I don't know if you saw the response from the uh, Goldsmiths feminists or the Goldsmiths LGBT. Oh, uh, no, that I haven't. You, oh, that is hilarious. I'll, I'll uh, just, uh, anyone in chat, just bring that up and put that up on the chat, and then uh, you can all look into that because uh, they both came out in support of the Muslims because obviously nobody cares what a, uh, a Muslim, uh, um, ex Muslim feminist has to say. So, what I would say is that the left needs to stop compromising. Uh, on its core beliefs. Okay. Well, it sounds like a good way to end it, Simon. Thank well, you for that's, your time. That's Thank you very much. Okay. Cheers. Goodbye. He had to go. His his mother was at the door. Uh, Simon had to take off early. I, what time is it in Bongland right now? I'm not even sure what time it is over there. Uh, chat's asking for the uh, link. I don't have the link on me, but you can find it if you if you look it up. I'll do uh, I'll do one more here, and then I'm gonna. Close it out. We've gone for about three and a half hours. A little, little over the amount of time that I wanted to do, but get one more going. Oh, let's see. Hello? Uh, yeah, hold on. Let me just mute the stream. Okay. 
right. I think it's muted. Uh, so, uh, what am I calling you, Rio? Uh, Rio, yes. Rio. Okay, Rio. What would you like to talk about? You're on stream. Um, two things. Uh, Black Lives Matter and education. Okay, sounds good. Go start well, us off. First of, well, first off, I, I do live in New York, actually. I, I live in the Bronx. And uh, when it comes to stuff like police brutality and Black Lives Matter, one of the things I don't like is how they portray black people. They always back the criminal. Every last case that Black Lives Matter people support, if you notice, they are black criminals. Yeah, the one like up in Minnesota, the guy choked, he, like what, he choked his wife, I think, right? Yeah, Jamar Clark beat his, uh, beat another man's girlfriend, I should say. And then, oh, okay, uh, another... uh, yeah, and then attacked the EMTs that were trying to help her because she was so injured. Yeah, like, you going to back with this guy who did that, but not to, I don't know, like, the kid like who was eight years old that got shot, like, executed by a bunch of thugs in Chicago. Yeah, it's like, it's insane. It, it's like the um, Warren Beatty movie, uh, Bullsworth. He, he basically said that uh, on a political whistle-stop tour in the movie. Uh, the reason nobody takes you seriously and you don't get anything accomplished is you keep backing criminals. Why are you doing that? There are better examples out there. Yeah, you know, I, I can't stand that, you know, and as a black person, when I go out and say these things, I'm looked at like, oh, oh you, you know, you don't care about your own black people, you're uppity, how dare you side with white people. No, how dare I not sign with criminals? I, I, my family has never been, ha doesn't, doesn't believe in criminals, we don't support them. If people in our family commit crimes like that, we don't talk to them. We don't send anything to them in, in prisons or anything like that, because it doesn't, we don't, we're not going to support people who do things that are antisocial and against society. Period. Which is, it's a completely reasonable stance to have. Yeah, I, I, that's the reason why I can't stand them. <laughs> but again, now going back to education, um, this, uh, our education system is fucked in America. You know, I, I just graduated from college actually with, uh, with, with for geology and it was unreal to see the lack of people doing um, engineering, geology, just basically any science. It was just so lacking with math. It was unreal, but everybody's all in, um, I think, like, I met a lot of music majors, a lot of English majors, uh, some of them even, like, feminist majors and stuff like that, you know, women's studies bullshit. Like, they all run in these courses, but they're, but thems are lacking. And as a matter of fact, the school had to... Pay, told me I had to pay more at the end, like more with labs and more with all my other stuff because of my major. Because school just said, well, there's not enough for you guys to support these, to support the majors and stuff like that. They are uh, even talking about cutting. You're, um, you're, you know. you're, you're cutting out a tiny bit. I, I caught uh, a, a lot of what you said. Um, that's, yeah, that's crazy. I don't know oh. what somebody with a, a feminist degree or a woman's study degree, you know, why they'd pay less. That... You know, or you know what I mean? Like it, it strikes me as crazy. I think somebody going in for a degree that's actually going to yield a job shouldn't be paying more than somebody's going in there and wasting everybody's time with some fucking superfluous uh, degree that's not going to do anything when they get out. Uh, it, it'd be weird too to be in the same class with them. Well, they're not. They were never in my classes. Uh, oh, for some reason, they were afraid to death of of geology. Something about being dirty or something. <laughs> Well, yeah, I could imagine, yeah, they'd actually have to do work and study. It'd be, a, it'd be a different kind of class. I know. I mean, they have to, I mean, their majors, they write an essay per uh, per class. So can you imagine you have to actually know, you know, the periodic table? You actually have to memorize all rocks, you know? Oh, God, they, they won't last 10 seconds. Yeah, they, they they would uh, they would break down at the, at the notion of having to do something, any anything related to any STEM field at all. Uh, would would be just too much. They couldn't they couldn't do it. They literally can't. It's too much. Yeah, that's one like one of the reasons why I do support uh, maybe cutting out like all those majors, like you know, like the liberal arts kind of degrees, like anything that has nothing to do with STEM. I think they should be slowly gets removed in colleges because it doesn't yield any results. It would you be know? yeah. It seems like a a lot of the more modern uh, kind of social justicey PC degrees that are out there right now seem like just a waste of time or a waste of money especially I, you know their parents are footing the bill for a lot of these kids uh, that are that are going for these kind of degrees and you know the, the joke used to be if you didn't want a job after college become an English major uh, now it's now now it's not just one degree but it's hundreds of them that aren't going to yield you any real work or get you anywhere in life one I, I don't know what you do with these degrees I don't know what job you get with some of these bizarre degrees that they're handing out. 
I, I'm absolutely nothing because, like I said, I live in New York City. Like, I when I go and look for jobs, they they most of the people they ask for are people who have like think like uh, economics degrees. I think it was like a think echo metrics or something like that. Uh, for me, it's usually with uh, geology, but it's most like environmental work kind of thing, or um, engineering, civil engineers. Like our city is falling apart. We need actual engineers to build buildings. But these jobs are all, you know, vacant for, for, I think, about a good two years now. Like, no one's claimed them because there's not enough engineers. No one's doing these things. No one is going into these majors. And we're seeing the results of it. Like, this, my city, the city is falling apart. Our roads are falling apart. The bridges are falling apart here. But no one can build them because everybody's in, 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 everybody's in English major. Right, because they want to they want to go for the degree that has the least amount of work. You know what I mean? They they want to get the thing where they can just write a paper about how they feel, rather than something that's going to require actual knowledge or critical thinking or logic or problem solving. Anything that's reliant on any of these fields that you have to study and work your ass off for. That's that's like a kryptonite to them. It's like a crucifix to a vampire. They don't want any part of it. Yeah, and now we now here we are. We looking at like you know primary school, secondary school, and we're and we're cutting those too with like what is this? Common Core. Th that's not in New York City. It's in Buffalo right now, and it's not doing really well in Buffalo. Like a lot of kids are not really learning what they're supposed to be learning, and they're thinking about cutting that. But well, the the problem with Common Core, at least what I see it as, is it is the lowest common denominator. It, it's really depressing too, because what it's saying is <clears throat> these kids that don't know what they need to know, we can't help them. So instead of fixing their issues and giving them the support they need to learn these things, we're going to just lower the standards and say they know. And we lower the standards for everybody. And so then we, pre we don't prepare any of these kids to go into high school or go into college. Yeah, you know, a lot of the problems with education, it comes down to time and money. They just don't want to put it in. Um, and, and it's depressing to think they're going to basically warp the curriculum and make the standards so low that you pass everybody rather than say, let's you know get our teachers actually more involved let's get the community more involved let's tutor them let's do after school classes with them let's do what we need to do to raise them up rather than lower the standards down yeah pretty much that it's kind of it really is sad because i'm worried about my cousins you know they're like eight they're nine they're trying you know and i'm wondering what are they learning if they're learning anything yeah i, I think you're going to probably see a rise in homeschooling and i think that parents and just concerned family, the best thing they can do at this point is, I, I know reading to young kids is really important. The more you read, uh, the better prepared children are, especially in elementary. And I know third grade is the cutoff. Uh, they don't talk about it publicly a lot, but if your kid has issues with reading or with mathematics, and they don't really start to address them or solve them by the third grade, they're pretty much fucked. Um, and, and so that's why it's so crucial to really be hands-on and involved, especially at a young age, especially in elementary. Yeah, but that's another problem well, when it comes to schooling. We don't see parents involved with their kids at all. Like, because I do know from, I think one of my cousins is a teacher. She basically says that she never sees any parents. Like one kid's parent she sees on a regular. That kid is doing fine. He has A's. But the rest of them who are getting A's or F's, you don't see any parents. You right. never see the parents. Well, the, the, one of the main or crucial pieces that are missing nowadays is the community aspect, whether that's family or just neighborhood. But uh, you know, schools have become kind of like these depositories where you just put kids and you expect the state to do everything for you. Well, they don't know what the fuck they're doing anymore. And without that component of a, you know, of a community actually being involved and kind of taking part, the kid really is let down and they don't, they don't have what they need to succeed. Yeah, I can agree with that, especially when it comes to black communities. I mean, you see that you know, daily, like most of us are usually in jail, on drugs, and then you're wondering, well, why is that? Well, there's no parents in the household. I don't consider that black woman who's sitting on welfare parent. And the absent father is, well, he's not a parent either. Yeah, somebody brought that up earlier too. Um, I think it was Martin was his name. Uh, the, the guy from the biracial family had said that he felt that like one of the big issues that needed to be addressed was, you know, more father figures, I guess, in education, uh, talking about black teachers, that kind of stuff, and saying that, with a, you know, that, that it would help to have uh, some kind of a figure community involved to take up the slack for kids that are missing that. And I don't think that's anything that people disagree with. I mean, I think people can point to evidence that shows that the more support a child has, the better they do in education, Where, wherever that support comes from. But it's it's crucial and it's needed. It, it, it wouldn't fill a big role. It would only be small because the major thing is, is parents. 
like I, I'm very lucky and blessed to have like my dad in my life. And, but then again, he's my only parent. My mother really didn't never cared about my education or anything else. She loves to brag about it, but she didn't help me with my homework. My dad did. And this guy, he, he went to like a, he graduated from a trade school, high school. <laughs> so he, you know, like he had to help me with my math homework and stuff like that. And, you know, this guy can't even, you know, do too much of that. Like, that's what we need. We need parents. I don't care any parent, mother or father. We just need it because there's none in the black communities. Sounds like you got a good dad. And there, there's nothing wrong with trade school. I mean, hard work's hard work. You know, more power to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. But, you know, th that's my point. My mother, you know, she supposedly is really smart, but, you know, she didn't want to help me with my homework. That's the reason why I said that. Oh, no, no, I got you. All right. Well, I, this stream's been going on forever. I, 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 I talk with you a little more, but we're kind of at the 10 thing, and I, I think I'm going to close up. Is there anything you want to leave us with before you go? Uh, no, nothing much other than um, uh, I think that, you know, you're a pretty great, Jim, and the stuff that you do and talk about, it's, you know, it's really important, you know. Well, thank you. I, I'm glad you appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right. Have a good Sunday. I will. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, the, the the stream went on a little longer than I expected. Uh, close on four hours, and I'm tired. And my voice is going to shit. Uh, I would do more calls. I, I've got a lot of people that are trying to get on. Uh, maybe we'll do, uh, because I missed it on Saturday, maybe I'll do another one. Maybe I'll do uh, the normal Meadowcast on Saturday and then another viewer one on Sunday, next Sunday, uh, once the Skype number is in place. So if you didn't get on this time, I'm sorry. I'll try to work it out better. I'm going to get a Skype number. You can just directly call that. And it should work. It should be good. But uh, that's what I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up here. I, I'm just I'm fucking tired <laughs> after doing this for I don't know how the hell people stream for eight hours. That that seems crazy to me. Your voice would be like gravel at the end of that. Well, I hope you enjoyed it, chat. You 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 got a whole diverse mix of people. You got you got people voting for the Labor Party, anarchist, atheists, fur fags, uh, a few people with autism. I'm pretty goddamn sure. And uh, yeah, it's been it's been one hell of a stream.